Welcome back to episode 172 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with Phil. How you doing? Loud collector. Hey, Phil, what's up, good buddy? Troy's gone. Uh-huh. He's on a an adventure. He'll, he'll tell everyone about it next week. So in his stead, because I was too terrified to do the show by myself, had to uh, find some people that are brave enough or stupid enough or literally have nothing better to do in their life than to host <laughs> the show. And so reached out to our good buddy, Phil. Hello. So welcome, man. And thank you for right. doing this. Thank you for having me. It was uh, quite the honor, man. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> All right. Uh, got a lot planned. It's going to be a little bit different show, of course, without Troy today. Uh, but excited for the the change up, I guess, a, a little bit. And we're going to get right into it. Uh, really quick, though, before we get started, just a reminder that the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a Patreon podcast which means we rely on supportive listeners like yourself to help us well cover our show expenses, produce more and hopefully better hockey card content and fun initiatives, even in a small way to grow the hockey hobby. It's very easy to support us. It starts at $5 a month. Uh, You can do it through Patreon. For a link to our Patreon site, you can go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com. Click on the Become a Patron link at the top of the page or just go to the Patreon website directly, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. There's a link in the show description if you're listening to us on a podcast app or in YouTube, and then finally in our TikTok and Instagram profiles as well. And it uh, gives me the opportunity, I guess, to publicly thank you, Phil, because uh, Phil is a is a member of our Patreon and is in the I Discord. We thank you very, very much for, for your support. Okay, so here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to get to know you a little bit. I want to ask you a lot about your collecting because you do in I, not really a unique way. I just don't know too many people i'm not friends with like people that collect what you do and so i want to learn kind of all about that uh, then of course we're going to do who's hot in the struggle bus we're going to go into hobby news uh big hobby set news. coming out hobby news hobby and 2023-24 news. sp game news we're going to cover that then we're going to answer mailbag questions so i got a bunch of those and we're going to end the show with personal pickups and both phil and i have personal pickups so i'm very very excited for that okay phil's here you know, he's closed the show, so we should probably get to know you a, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so, Phil, let's start with kind of the basics. So, Okay, I'm ready. From, how much do you weigh? What's the results of your blood work? <laughs> yeah. no, are, you make, are you making that joke because I accidentally did send my blood work to our group chat? <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> so that so was Phil's, in, <laughs> Phil's in Canada, duh, as I like yeah. to call it. Uh, I know he loves the Senators. He loves Brady Kachuk, which we're going to talk about a lot. But but let's start. So when did you first start collecting? Is it a uh, card stay hockey? Is that how they they say in, in card stay hockey? Yes. So I'm not bilingual, but I do live in Ottawa, and we also call it uh, Ottawa Gatineau. So I'm very good at franglais, which is English and French together. Okay. It's its own thing, and uh, so I speak it very well, and I understand it very well. I just don't understand and speak French very well. Um. Yeah. There we go. I I, I just do English. I, I'm not <laughs> no, you and Troy do pretty good. You. <laughs> well. Oh. Uh, I'll help out. I'll help out where I can. Thanks, I'm definitely thanks. screaming when I'm watching you guys. Um, <laughs> so the journey, where did it start? Um, I'm born, I was born in Montreal uh, to um, immigrant parents. <laughs> so my father very much uh, gravitated towards hockey, mo- hockey and baseball. So the Expos and the Habs mm-hmm. um, drove, uh, he worked really hard, drove a taxi in Montreal. Um, you know, we d- I didn't have much growing up there, but I always had hockey with him. And uh, we were a very religious family, and my uh, my my mother moved to Ottawa when I was very very young. So I lived half in Montreal, half in Ottawa. And I, I know it's a little cheesy, but uh, the cards always stayed with me, right? So if I was in Montreal, yeah. I bought cards. I got to look at the cards. Adult problems are going on, but I lose myself in in, uh, in collecting cards. And then I come in Ottawa. It's a totally different life for a, a child. Um, you know, you're with your mom half the time, but my cards always stayed with me. My same cards, yeah. same cards. So I, I I loved it, right? So I, I think that gives me a sense of uh, security as an adult or whatnot. I don't I don't want to get too deep. Um, but yeah. Well, who, did, who did you collect? Who did you collect as a kid? Like who, the Habs. The Habs. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're, Do you sure. have a favorite player that you just? Loved? Um, Bobby Smith. Yeah, Bobby Smith. Okay. Yeah. Minnesota, right? There you go. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah, number and then fifteen. Did, did you do the typical kind of? get into high school and post high school and all that. And, uh, you know, sort of step away from collecting a little bit and find girls and other things in life and then come back to it. Or have you collected all the way through? Uh, so I stop. I, I have very immature reasons why I stopped collecting. I always collected, uh, through high school. 
Um, I'd say the real time, my okay. So the, fair enough. I did stop um, collecting in my early twenties because I, I, you know, was trying to make money chasing the girls. Um, yeah. Pretty much when I stopped playing hockey, I played hockey my whole life as well. Um, so when I stopped playing, when I when I tried out for junior B on the second tryout, I was like, yeah, this is not happening. Uh, and then I just gave up on the whole thing. I thought hockey was stupid. They're a bunch of millionaires. Um, yeah. So, but not that long. Only maybe uh, five, six years. And then um, uh, once my uh, once my girlfriend got pregnant with ha Hasselhoff's mom, Hasselhoff's my son, uh, he's 16 now, I started getting back into it because I, I started going to Sens games and I'm not going to have a child and not raise him a proud Sens fan, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and I got right into it in the 2000s and, uh, you know, Sens were a really good team then, so it was easy to collect them. Yeah, it was lots mm -hmm. of fun, man. I was a big Alfredson guy, so I collected Alfredson PC uh, since 95-96. Okay, so he was your first big Senators yeah. PC guy. Gotcha. Yeah, still is. He's my. Everyone thinks it's Brady Kachuk, Brady, but I, my Daniel Alfredson collection is far larger than uh, Brady Kachuk. Yeah, I have a monster box just of base cards and not even parallels, nothing. Well, that yeah. is interesting because I I know you as the Brady Kachuk guy. Yeah. And so, are you just collecting more Brady Kachuk right now than Alfredson? Or I'm going all in. You're going all in. All okay. in on Brady. Yeah. Perfect. This is where I want to get to. This is where Let's I'm really fascinated because I'm too afraid to do this to like, I love K Kirill Kaprizov, but I talk myself out of PC in him all Why? the time. He's great. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, do maybe, 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 maybe we'll get into that. Okay. So <laughs> what, what is it about Brady Kachuk where you pushed your hobby chips all in and just uh, dove into this guy? You got it. I got a good answer for you. Um, so I loved his, so we have to go back a little bit to Keith Kachuk, Big Walt, his father. So when Keith Kachuk got drafted in the 90s, I think it was what, 90, 91, um, he was American. So when I was collecting cards, he had a star rookie card, I think. Uh, no, yeah. he had a world, he had a world junior card, but he was American. So I didn't pay much attention to him. I was very, uh, not, well, maybe not naive was the word, but uh, ignorant. <laughs> I was ignorant. I didn't think Americans could play like what, like Jeremy Roenick was the only one, right? Phil Housley sure. kind of sucks too. And uh like, he's okay. And, um, yeah, so I didn't pay much attention to him. It all changed. I'm telling you, it all changed when uh, Keith Kachuk smoked Gretzky. <laughs> he smoked him in, like, 96, 97. I've never seen that before. I've, I've ne I didn't know you could do that. He was he changed the whole thing, right? Like, I love yeah. people that do things when I was like, you can't do that. Well, uh, silly person, yes, I can. <laughs> so, so when I saw that hit, I mean, McSorley uh, leveled him right after. Um, doesn't matter though. I, I fell in love with Keith Kachuk, that power forward. So then it was yep. like David Backus, uh, Todd Bertuzzi. And that, well, that didn't end well. Uh, that was a bad segue <laughs> anyways, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, you know, yeah. that power forward. And I, and I'm a little guy, I'm, I'm only five, nine. I mean, well, mm -hmm. I, I'm probably 180 now. Uh, but I, I was never a big hockey player, but I played big, you know, my mouth was big. Yeah. My, I, I played big, big, um like a big player but i was defense sure. and so you know i loved it that's why i collected so when i found out uh matthew kachuk was coming in the league i watched him how he played i'm like oh he's not really like keith i still liked him but then i saw brady at boston college that's it that's that's all it took and then that year they wanted to draft uh sorry i'm going on and on but no that, no, no. That... I'm, I'm fascinated keep going okay and then that year um, I think it was 16, 17 or 17, 18, the Sens were um wanted to draft Philip Zadina. And I was like, no, don't draft Zadina. Cause it's all he was a, yeah. a little guy, little sniper, everyone. So I would I was a big contributor on Reddit forums at that time. Yeah. I have strong opinions as well. I don't know if you noticed. Okay. Yeah. No. So I was Kidding. losing my mind, man. Everyone's like Zadina. When they picked Kachuk, I was so happy. One of the very few things Pierre Dorian has done well. And I was so happy. No one, uh, this city is 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 so embarrassing for their lack of hockey knowledge. They're only as good as you are today. Draws me yeah. crazy. Um, so, anyways, and, and then when we drafted Brady Kachuk, that's it. I and and then at that time, I was, still wasn't collecting heavily because I opened a business and I was only in my second year of business, so I couldn't just start like taking the deposits and buying uh yeah, yeah. uh flagship, right? But yeah. I, I I did buy quite a few young guns, I just didn't buy any exclusives or anything, and then COVID hit. Um, so I just watched from a distance and then I, I went pretty hard in once the market tanked. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you remember your first Brady Kachuk card? Yes. What, what, what is it? Young guns. Do you still have that one? You know oh, I'm not, I'm not sentimental like that. Uh, yeah. I've never sold a Brady Kachuk. It's in the mix. 
Yeah. Okay. I have okay. like a hundred, a hundred and ten, maybe Brady Kachuk raw young guns. One hundred and ten raw young guns. That's nothing. I have three over three hundred and fifty Shane Pinto uh, young guns. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. You want to <laughs> inside voice, Phil? Inside voice. <laughs> But yes, Brady Kachuk. I, I, it was just a young gun. I just stopped at my local yeah. Uh, card store. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you have like a specific goal in my, like, 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 what, what do you hope to accomplish with? Are there just certain cards that you just want as many as you can? Yeah, is there... yeah. I like a card. I want to buy all. Of... You know, one of my favorite cards is Josh, the rookie, uh, rookie breakout from Flagship. There's only a hundred. It's yeah. not an expensive card. It's, it's what, top three favorite Brady Kachuk rookie cards ever. I love it. I absolutely his OPC. He has an OPC base card from two years ago. I should have sent it to you for the show. Um, he's it's just a beautiful black Leo card. He's just looking. He's got the big C on it. It's one of my all time favorite cards. I'm trying to scan it to make it a poster. So if it's aesthetically yeah. pleasing to my eyes, if it makes my eyes feel nice, I want more of it. Like the acetate, you know, the young gun acetate. Oh yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in a second. So so okay. the rookie breakouts. Are you are you kind of sad that they stopped producing? Yes. Those? Yeah, I am. That's a bummer. I don't, I tried to call Billy. He didn't answer, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so of the Kachuk rookie breakouts, how many do you have? Just one. Yeah. One. That's Just very one. Unlike you, Phil. I know. I know. It's very, yeah, I know. Ah, ah, ah. I know. I only have one. So I've had to make a few adult decisions lately and not buy some cards. And I had to do that a few years ago as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone was suffering during COVID, but at the end of it, when all, when the market was kind of freaking out, that's when I swooped in and bought, got a lot of good deals. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I should mention too, because you actually did a really good video on your YouTube channel, the loud collector. Uh -huh. So I recommend Thanks. everyone go check that out where you actually went through your Kachuk collection. So we're not going to yeah. kind of repeat that. People nah. can just go watch it if they're yeah. interested, but there are a couple cards that it's pretty amazing for, for any PC. Uh, like, is it like how many high gloss do you have? I have three high gloss Brady Kachuks. Okay. You have three. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they were expensive. And then, and then, how many Young Guns acetates do you have? Uh, I have, I have ten now. I have ten. No, I have eleven. I picked another one up a couple weeks ago. I have eleven. You have eleven acetates. Yeah. Because oh, you oh, have no. Discord. Wait, so, do you have ahead, more? No, I out of the eleven, one of them's a PSA ten. Pop one. Pop there one. Go. There you go. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so we know they they make more than ten, right? Because you have eleven. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, yes. And then I did a Facebook post to try and gauge. See, it's trickier. Hobby's tricky, right? Because guys get like, they button up. Like, who wants my cards? Who? I didn't, I didn't yeah. want their cards. I just wanted to track them down. I just wanted to track yeah. them down. Because Upper Deck okay. won't give us the print report. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mysterious. <laughs> How many Brady Kachuk cards do you think you have in total? <sighs> Probably not as many as you or the Hobby would think. I'm very, very, so I learned from Alfredson. I spent way too much money buying very mid, mid range, like artifacts out of 15. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> like I'm not interested in those. So I learned from my Alfreds. I had 20 years, man, uh, 20 mm -hmm. over 20 years of learning on how to PC collect a, a player. Um, so I learned from my mistakes with Alfredson's. I have Alfredson cards that I can never sell to anybody unless there's another me out there. There probably isn't. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, you know, I could probably sell my mid range Alfredson cards for like $50,000. If there's a buyer, call me. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not buying any Brady Kachucks like that. I think we're going to get into that later in the show as well with one of the questions. Yeah. Yeah. Do you care what your Kachuk collection is worth? No financial, like, like fiat, like uh money. Yeah. No, not, no, I don't give a, I don't care. Not at all. I know it's weird. You catch. And, and, yeah, people. Yeah, thank you. Uh, people, um, pe people probably. Well, people that know me know I'm telling the truth. People that don't know me probably like, yeah, right, buddy. That's fine. I so I do have I do have my cards insured, and I do not keep all my cards in the same place. I keep my cards in yeah. three three different places. They are assets at a certain point, right? Only well, they're mm -hmm. assets all the time. But uh, once you're breaking six figure, you know, probably want to take care of that. Yeah. yeah. But so, I don't care what they're worth. No. So you were all in on Kachuk in college, and then you just had the great fortune for your favorite team to draft him. So that must have yeah. th that's that's pretty cool. Now, since he's come into the league, how has your affinity for him changed? I mean, are you super? He's a good player, obviously. Yeah. I don't think he's disappointed anyone's. But has he lived up to your expectations? He's exceeded my expectations. 
Yeah, he's awesome. exceeded exceeded my expectations. Um, the team has not, so it's 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 kind of a a gray area answer. I'm so proud of Brady, the way he plays, the way he handles things. I wasn't too happy the way he held out. Uh, was it three years ago, two years ago? Um, yeah. But it wasn't. But then if you look at uh, the apple doesn't far, fall far from the tree, his dad held out three times as well. You know, sure. and, and I, I'm not going to knock him for taking dad's advice. It didn't last long. He came. He got the captaincy. It's water under the bridge. It's business. I'm not going to pretend yeah. to know something. It's not. I know trees and coniferous vegetation. I'm not going to pretend to know uh, boardroom deals, you know. So whatever mm-hmm. happened there, that was kind of a bummer. Um, but the way he plays, the way he sticks up for his teammates, I'd like him. I'd like him to fight less. Um, he has more skill than I thought. He's got three hat tricks. He popped. He had another hat trick yeah. uh, last week. You know, he. I, I did not believe he was going to get these points. He's racking up. You know, and he's not even playing. He's not. He's not even playing with Stutzel half the time anymore. So he. He's got good hands. He's a power forward man. They. I love. It. They don't make him like that anymore. In no. ten years. He's probably he found a spot in the league that he can he can be aggressive with the way he plays and uh and stay in the league and be a force. You want to play mm-hmm. against Brady? I don't. <laughs> I don't think yeah. many people do, you know. Yeah, very happy with the way he's played. Well, he's got size too, and a lot of these young Big stars boy. are teeny tiny yeah. little five eight, hundred and sixty-five yeah. pound kids, right? That Caulfield that, effect, right? Mm-hmm. Is there a Brady Kachuk card that you passed on buying? That haunts you to this day. Uh, no, okay. no, I I bought everything I want All for right. the most part. There's there's one or two cards out there that are still for sale. Um, yeah. but like I'll give you an example. The guy bought it for like four hundred and fifty bucks. He wants two thousand for it. Okay, like mm-hmm. I, ugh, it's a one on one, but yeah, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, are, are is there is there like a bucket list of Kachuk cards that you don't have that you really want? Or have you sort of satisfied or are you, you know, if your collection doesn't grow by a single card, are you happy with it? No, I'll get those cards. No. So the cup one one RPA from uh, 2018, 2019, my mm-hmm. buddy, uh, my buddy has that card. He wants uh, an, ex- an ex- um, is this so exorbitant, an exorbitant, exorbitant. an yeah. exorbitant amount of money, like obscene, like five figures well into it. Um, I'll yeah. get it. I, I'm, I, I'll get it. I, um, but I'm patient. So there's some, mm-hmm. there's three, three or four cards that are my grail cards for Brady. I know where they all are and I will get them. I just have to be patient. I have to use my adult wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of another, I guess, line of questioning that I have about people that sort of super PC, a specific player. Do you know, like most of the other big Brady Kachuk collectors out there? Like, are you mm-hmm. pretty confident that, you know, I do. Well, yeah. Well, we're all friends. It sucks. I wish I hated them, but they're great guys. Yeah, they're really, really good guys. Uh, there's two. There's three of us in Ottawa. Yeah. Um, we're like a big melting pot. Like I'm Greek, one's Mexican, and one's um, Vietnamese. <laughs> like it's great, and we all love our sons. It's awesome, and uh, we're huge. So I'm the biggest Brady Kachuk collector. They're probably the biggest Ottawa Senator collectors, but Brady's the captain. So you know, friendly fire is kind of killing me on those, right? Yeah, they, they yeah, won't so get... like uh, I don't mean this as an ego question, just more as like a factual question. Do you think you have the biggest or best Brady Kachuk collection in the whole world? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't want to answer that, Joe. Top three. I'm in top three. Okay. Top yeah, three. I don't. I, I'm not. Uh, I love showing my cards. I don't like showing off my cards. I got you. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I just don't know if like, so do you feel like that that you compete with any specific <laughs> people or is it more just competing for the cards? Uh, I think the competition is over for Brady. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah I think there the competition go. is over for Brady. Yeah. There's just a few loose pieces that I'd like. Um, I think my ship's the strongest. It has a couple of leaks and maybe those cards would plug it, but they're not catching me. Gotcha. I got yeah. you. <laughs> is that is there sense? anyone else on the, on the UPC on the, you yeah. Know, Okay, what else? Uh Gretzky. I love Wayner. Yeah. yeah, I love Wayne. Got good. Well, that's like a law in Canada. I mean, have you have you ever met? Are there are there like anti Gretzky Canadians that like say he's overrated? No. And, yeah. That'd be weird. That's like not eating bacon. I don't trust you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I don't uh, think no, so. No, wait, wait, Wayne. I'm see. I I was at Wayne Gretzky's last hockey game ever in Canada, 
I didn't even like I watched him play my whole life. I, I never cared to watch him. I never collected him before. But ever since he retired, I don't mm-hmm. know if is it like a childhood thing, like for the, that Oilers jersey, you know, like I just it makes oh, me yeah. feel safe. Like you know, it's like watching commercials after a horror movie. Like you feel safe, you know, mm-hmm. there, there's something about Wayne in the Oilers jersey, even the Kings jersey. I mean, it doesn't have that same effect, but like our we have a glow peachy card that we share. Um, oh, yeah. no, you have one. I have one, but we have it in common. Um, and it, that's a beautiful, that's one of my all time favorite cards, man. You know, so I like Gretzky Gretzky. too. I just don't, I'm so weird with this, but I don't like the turtleneck era. Oh, (laughs) well, yeah, that's Alexei Kovalev, eh? (laughs) Yeah, I just said a little hat logo on there in the turtleneck, in the turtleneck. Yeah, it's pretty uh, silly. Okay, so beyond his rookie, which everybody loves, yeah, what's your favorite? I I think I know the answer to this, but what's your favorite Gretzky era? The uh, the refractor blast from the past uh, ninety eight ninety nine. I got three of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want more. I want as many as I can get of those. Yeah, yeah. So you really find stuff you like and like just hoard it. Like yeah, that's your- yeah. I want lots of it. If it's like if it's broke, don't fix it. You know. I got you. Yeah. No, no. You never worry like with Brady Kachuk or or any of these guys that. Well, you kind of had this happen to you. Like the the whole like Carter Hart, Shane Pinto, right? Oh, I got like, Pinto. Yes, I got Harded or whatever you want to call. It. Yeah, it was horrible. Oh, two years I've been waiting for this to Brody. <laughs> did, yeah. did that? Did that kind of make you rethink a little bit? Like like if you want to go in on all in on certain like especially young prospects who you don't know all that. Yeah. Much so I I really I think the key to life is knowing yourself. And I know myself, I'm not good at making money in this hobby. So I tried. I remember I made a conscious decision with Pinto because no one was talking about him. His young guns were like five bucks, six bucks. I'm like, why is no one talking about Pinto? He's amazing. So I just, I quietly, as quietly as the loud collector can go quietly, they call me whispers. And uh, (laughs) I bought Pinto, Pinto. I got 17 exclusives, man. 17. Those weren't cheap. And of course, the expo, when the expo hit to last year, Pinto was like uh, leading the rookies and everyone was selling yeah. these young guns for like 30 bucks. Oh, man, it drove me crazy. Some exclusives cost me like $700 that weekend. Anyways, oh. I still have. Yeah, I know. I know. So when you guys think you're silly, just think of me. I got Pintoed. But I still have every card. I've never sold a Pinto card. Yep. And even if it works out for me, if I 3X my money, I got lucky. I'm not good at... Uh, I don't look at the, the, the financial part of our hobby. Um, I mean, you know I say this all the time, Phil, that every time I try to make money, I get killed. Yeah. Did honestly, I, I yeah. do. And then when I don't try to, I just collect stuff. I think is super cool. Yeah. That's the stuff that goes up in value. And then I don't want to sell it anyways. So I'm bad at making money yeah. in this hobby too. And I suck, I, man. yeah, I just don't um, understand that. Well, and actually beyond Pinto, you know, the, the other kind of risk and, and, Ottawa's got another great example of this, and like a Josh Norris, who if the kid could stay healthy, oh, scores points in in bunches. But I don't think he ever will stay healthy, right? No, I think we, he's toast, man, Mister Glass. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, you um, go in even before his injury. I just didn't think he had it. I, I I don't think a guy like Josh Norris is gonna grind it out in the playoffs. I just I I don't think so. You know, and I love the guy. I think he's a really nice guy. I don't care. I don't care. He's a nice guy. I want to win a cup. I want to make mm-hmm. the playoffs. I want to win a cup. So, oh, okay. So, so what I want to do is kind of wrap up this conversation with sure. maybe some advice from you. And it, oh. again, I, I know that anybody it, it's, you can never tell anyone what to collect. Cause the whole point of it, this hobby is to, to collect whatever moves you and collect what you yeah. love. Right. Like everyone says, but you have going back to Alfredson and Pinto and, and Kachuk it, it, just from your point of view. And that's all you can give. If anyone's like thinking about like me with Kirill Kaprizov or some other collector okay. with their favorite player, kind of trying to build a player PC, what's what's advice? If I came and asked you for advice, if I said Phil, I want to build, I think I'm going to want a PC Kaprizov. Uh, you've done this for a long time. What are some of the key things you've learned? Um, I so I would first make sure you're firm on that's what you want to do. Is that your player? Yes, Kaprizov's my player. I love the way he plays, Phil. I've been watching him for three years. I, I my heart is set on him. Then th- by definition, your answer, you're, you can be as patient as you want. So when I collect Brady, I still buy Brady Kachuk Young Guns, excuse me, all the time, all the time. Why? When I get a good deal. It's a very common card. 
be patient in your deals. And on the flip side of that coin, pull the trigger super fast when you find a card, a high-end card that you want of Kirill Kaprizov. So for sure. example, if we're at the expo in April and you see a high gloss of Kaprizov for $2,000, well, let's say $4,000, okay? I've never seen a Kaprizov high gloss for sale, yep. ever. And you got the money, you should pull the trigger. You really yep. should, because that card's going to be gone. That card, you're going to do one walk around, and that card's going to be gone. So I'm giving conflicting advice. Oh, man, you you just you just got to, you got to, I don't know, Joshi Poo. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you got to be no, firm right. in your, you got to be firm in your decisions um and and collect a try and find a hobby within the hobby does that make sense yeah so i i i collect brady kachuk i don't collect any artifacts cards of brady kachuk I, it's not it's not a blanket rule i i just don't like them yeah. um so i i stick to i stick to the sub level of my player and that sub level mm -hmm. is my my stank my cadence my mm -hmm. uh the way i view view that player i'm not giving you a good answer man i'm sorry no i i i think you are and here's what I've observed about you that I appreciate is that you you don't get swayed by FOMO or no, never. public opinion that if there's a card that let's say 99.9% .9 of people are in love with that you don't like, like you're, you're very, you're not like mean about it. You're just like, oh, that's not for me. I understand why people appreciate it, but I don't care if I have it or not. And then you just Bingo. move on. Right. Like and, the draft so, boards from the cup when uh, about 10, 15 years ago, the draft boards, you know, the booklets and yeah. those were the hottest ticket, man. Oh, draft board, draft board, draft board. I, I, I've, I have one now. I just got it on a good deal. I stayed away from it. I'm not, I was mm -hmm. not interested. So that's a that, thank you for uh, knowing me better than I know me. That's exactly um, gr great advice that I'm giving through Josh. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> All right, Phil. All right, let's do we're, this. We're, we're going to move on. Let's, it's time let's for rip. 24. Who's hot in the struggle bus? Yes, I'm ready. 2023, 24 NHL season. This is where Phil and I are going to nominate players who we think are going scorched earth in their competition, lighting yeah. up the scoreboard. And then we're going to talk about a couple guys who, while well, are stuck in the mud and are riding the struggle bus, like we always do, Phil. We're going to start out with who's hot. And I have the first pick this week. I got to go with Phil. Sebastian Ajo. Now, the Sebastian Ajo, the place for the Hurricanes, of course. Ah, not, there we go. Not the Islanders. Yeah. <laughs> this Sebastian Ajo is 26 year old forward who, his last nine games, Phil, has just six goals, eight assists for 14 points. He had a hat trick on Friday night and kind of a weird game, but a, a 7 6 shootout loss to the Washington Capitals. Giving Sebastian Ajo in the season 30 goals, 49 assists for 79 points and 68 games played. If you just count the 2020 21 COVID shortened season, which really sucks for like looking at cumulative stacks and players because there's only like what 50 or so games and nobody had a ton of stats, it would be his fifth straight full season with 30 or goal more goals. Does that Great surprise record. you? Um, I, I wouldn't have said that he's been that consistent of a goal score. No, no, not not at all. I, I, uh, Carolina man, regular season, uh, champions, and then yeah. they, uh, Crap the bed in the playoffs. I, I don't know much about Ajo. I'm pretty blown away at all these. The most goals he scored in a season was 37 back in 2021-22. His career high for points is 81 from that same year. So he's really close to setting a career high in points. His team, the Hurricanes, of course, are currently second in the Metropolitan Division. Should be a lock for the playoffs. I think a lot of them consider them at least a legitimate contender for the Cup. But you're right. The, the, the sort of book on them so far is can't get past that tough series that second don't have the offensive firepower but well they maybe tried to address that this year some big trade deadline deals adding jake gensel yeah. you have genny kuznetsov so we'll see uh sebastian aho is currently centering the hurricanes top line with wingers gensel and seth jarvis hmm. and he also centers carolina's first power play unit as well so is he it, uh is he 15 60 is he uh McDa mcdavid's year no, 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 he's he's Matthews. He's oh, Matthews. okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2016, 17, uh, okay. the Young Guns, PSA 10 pop, 812. 51% huh. gem rate, last sold for just 71 US dollars. Man, that's hobby loves Pretty them, goal eh? score every year, right? <laughs> yeah, nobody loves them. <laughs> nobody loves them. It is down 11% in the past two weeks and 29% in the past three months. So I, I, what I think with the 
with a lot of these hurricane guys in the hobby is prove it to me in the playoffs. Is sort yeah, of no one cares. I mean, like Ron Francis effect, right? It's like second. Look how many points Ron Francis got. No one collects in Carolina as well. All right, Phil, goes to you. Yeah, let's party. Okay, who did I pick? I picked, uh, well, I know who I picked. My boy Stammer, Steven Stamkos. Okay, here we go. Steven Stamkos is very hot. 10 points in his last five games. Proves he still got it. Look at that picture right there. It's very biblical. Um, <laughs> yeah. Scored. He popped in two, uh, two, points, uh, two goals last night as well. He's doing all this on the second line. He's not even on the first line with Kucherov. So he's doing this on the second yeah. line with Pirelli and Hagel. I mean, he, he gets forgotten, guys. He gets forgotten. He's also Greek, descended from the gods, gave us democracy and mathematics. Um, okay, I got to stop you there because you're, okay. you're very proud of your Greek heritage. I am, yes. You don't PC Stamkos? No, I don't. <laughs> no, ow. Uh, no, God, that hurt. No, I, I do not PC Stamkos. <laughs> No Greeks are. I can't handle Greeks, man. They're they're too they're too much. The Greek people are the best. It, if if I start collecting him, then I'll meet other Greeks, and then it'll get out of control. Trust me. No, okay. I don't collect stamp goes. It's good okay. enough. I collect them from a distance. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, uh, yeah, he's a champ. He's a champion. He's a leader. In the last ten games, Tampa Bay has gone six two and two. A lot of people didn't think they had uh, enough muster to finish the the regular season, but I think they do. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's a 2008, 2009 Young Guns. Uh, is PSA 10. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Josh. 38% uh, thir gem rate. Ouch. That's a rough yeah. year, no? Uh, well, I mean, it's pretty average with what it's been the last few years. No kidding, eh? His last one yeah. sold for $343 American on March 23rd. Um, oh, wow. Up 16% in the past couple of weeks. And same Z's over the past three months uh, price price wise so i don't think the hobby uh i mean just going by the my gut i don't think the hobby really cares too too much about him but no. a lot more in sebastian aho <laughs> yeah well obviously well, he's got more pedigree right? he's got cups and yeah. he's 500 goal score thousand points i believe too so probably doesn't get a ton of love in in, in that regard and so for the the last guy phil and who's hot i'm actually going to stick with the lightning and go with uh oh, I got Kucherov, but... which which is a little obvious at this point, but but I kind of if you look at his past two weeks, it, it's almost impossible it. to leave him off this. So yeah. in the last five games, that's five. So one fingers of one hand, he's uh, just got sixteen points. Oh, Jesus, for good for defenseman, hey Troy. I uh, mean Josh, yeah. <laughs> three goals, thirteen assists. Uh, just 30 years old still, Lightning Forward now has 41 goals, 82 assists for 123 points in 69 games played. So is Phil, is 1.78 points per game on the season pretty good in your mind? Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Come on. He can do better. Round up. Let's get to two. His 41 goals is tied for his career high, and he's six points away from beating his career high in points. Woo. So. Where he he had forty one goals and one hundred twenty nine points in twenty nineteen, and he won the Hart Trophy, and he's gonna beat that this year. Yeah, do you think he'll win the Hart uh, again this year? He's got some competition. To me, McDavid is out. I, I know yeah. for a lot of people, I mean, McDavid's still McDavid. He's still probably the most skilled, talented player in the league. Mm. But I. And I, I'm a little surprised though that people are giving McDavid such a pass from going from basically 65 goals to 25. Yeah, he's got 26 <laughs> or something. A, like that. It's, a, it's a big difference. Yeah, it's a big delta there. No, he's got a billion assists and he's still got over 100 points and he's still playing great. But I, I just don't. I, I think that McKinnon and Kucherov are ahead of him this year. Do you agree or disagree with that? Um, I would. I would. I would pick Kucherov over McDavid because I love Kucherov and I've been paying a lot more attention and I'm catching some lightning games. He, he is, he is absolutely incredible and a beyond a value to his team. Um, take out McDavid. I mean, you got, uh, what about Nathan McKinnon? Do you think Kucherov is ahead of McKinnon this year? I haven't watched McKinnon enough to play, but I think I have watched him enough to say, yes, I do think Kucherov. I don't think the all-star thing helped him. <laughs> no. I don't think that all that's in the back of my mind. I, I want to say affirm yes to you, but I'm kind of like, oh, you kind of didn't really care about that, you know, and that's the big knock on him. He's kind of like a lazy skilled guy, but I, I think it's going to depend how he finishes because so they have 12 games left. 
And again, he said 16 points in five games, right? If he does half of that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know, he he could we could be looking at 45 goals and 140 points. If he continues to just go nuts, there's an outside chance he gets 150 points this year. And I think That's if any insane. of the guys That's get crazy. to that, then it's pretty much the heart trophies in, in the bag there. So his 123 points on the seasons tops in the NHL. He's four points currently ahead of Nathan McKinnon, eight points ahead of McDavid. He's tied for seventh in goals right now in the league with teammate Braden Point. And Kucherov's career numbers are starting to get, I think, into impressive territory as well. 713 games so far, 317 goals, 535 assists for 852 points. So 852 points in 713 games. You're you're a pretty good player. At Not that bad. Point. Not bad. Two-time Stanley Cup champion, of course. Won the Hart, Art Ross, Ted Lindsay Award. And the hobby just never really has cared about this guy. So, so what is it? Why? I don't know. No, I don't. I mean, I mean, Stamkos was hurt when they won the last cup. Stamkos didn't even play. Kucherov led them the whole way, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And nothing, nothing. uh, I mean, what is, do you have any uh, price action here? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, so I got something. I I took a little bit of a different angle at it. Okay. And because sometimes price can be misleading if it's high in sales or, or, you know, his, his young guns was 2013 when they didn't print a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be lower pop counts. So I looked at total cards sold since the start of the season, since the very first day of the NHL season on the secondary market, because it gives you an indication too beyond price. Like just how many people are buying this guy's cards? Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. 1,558 Kucherov cards have sold in total since the start of the season. Now, and I'm not, I'm going to make some comparisons and I'm not trying to knock these players. Yeah. But I'm just trying to say in the context of the guy who has the most points in the NHL, like you remember Laffy Phil, Alexi Lafreniere? Of course. He's almost double the Lafreniere cards have sold since the start of the season. This year? Yeah, this year. Thank How does that try. make any sense? Uh, Trevor Zegers hasn't played and he sold about triple the oh, amount of cards as, as Kucherov. Even Brad Marchand has sold more cards. That's again, okay. I know he's the captain of the, of That's the Bruins, okay. but I like Mark Brad. But but he's not. <laughs> again, my point isn't to dog any of these guys. It's that, and you compare too. Like McDavid has, I don't have the exact number, but he sells over two thousand cards a month, right? And and so yeah. if you go October, November, December, January, February, March, that's like what twelve, fourteen thousand McDavid cards have sold in the span. Of fifteen hundred Kucherov cards, just you know what? Nobody we, collects this guy. It's got no personality. Not that Lafreniere. Um, McDavid Lafreniere. has a personality. No, but okay, okay. McDavid's <laughs> an outlier because he's the best in the world. I know. I no, know. McDavid's as vanilla as you can get. I get it. Uh, sorry, Connor. Um, but uh, Kucherov play, plays in Tampa Bay, far yeah. away from Canada. I don't know, man. The guy's got like my parking meter's got more uh, of a personality. Like it, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's what it is. Like Brad Marchand, you you have hardcore Boston uh, faithfuls. Zgrass is a little turd that everyone loves, especially Troy. So I can't stand him. But I mean, you know, every, people love that um, yeah. controversial personality, and he's oh, ridiculously yeah. talented. Kucherov, he's got. I've never even seen him in an interview. Have you? No, and it could be the Russian. It could be the language yeah. thing that could be for preventing it too but he came here popped in some goals made millions he's probably gonna go back and you know i don't know not much to him maybe that's my best guess i think i read in wikipedia his dad is a colonel in the russian army oh good that's good yeah not a political show no not a political show no opinions (laughs) okay nikita kudrov is a 2013 14 young guns PSA 10 population of just 449, 58% gem rate. So higher than Stammer, that's for sure. Yeah. Last sold for 560 US dollars on March 21st. It is up about 23% in the that past seems pretty good. three months. Yeah. That seems pretty high. No? No, no, not too bad. Yes. I think so. All right, Ready? Phil. What's it's up? Here. What's next? The oh, struggle. here we go. The struggle bus is here. <laughs> uh, came up. I think you're the first person besides me or Troy in talk about honors and distinctions no one cares about. 
that gets to nominate a player for the struggle bus. Oh, I'm so happy. So happy. Talk, talk about him. Okay, so here we go. You let me know when you're ready for me to flip the photo here. Oh, I'm ready yesterday, Josh. Okay. Yes, sir. So don't we get the noise? Where's the bus? That's post production. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> real time okay no. hey no hey more. wait 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 wait. you know the button bar i've been hammering troy about for that six months yeah like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that'll be real time once we get that okay. Okay. <laughs> now i gotta oh, tell you something funny. funny about this too okay it's not your fault so well first of all just say the name of who you picked so i can kind of give you my little um point of context here this week the number one struggle bust champion is alex de meow I think Kitty Cat was on the struggle bus like two, three weeks ago. And and but I didn't tell you on purpose because I I know as an Ottawa Senators fan, I just wanted to let you go <laughs> and see and see what happens. So I'm <laughs> passing the mic to you and I want you to to uh just talk from speak from the heart, Phil, and and, yes. and why is uh, Alex Debrinkat on the struggle bus? Well, Alex Debrinkit, let's uh let's 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 keep it simple, okay? We won't complicate this. Alex Deprinkett is on the struggle bus. He has in his last seven games. Normally, I would have picked five games, but I had to squeeze in a few extra points for the little guy. So he had three points in seven games. Absolutely yeah. terrible. His ice time. Uh, hold on here. His career average ice time is over 19 minutes in five seasons. He's actually in his last five games. He's been under 15 minutes. So something's really wrong there. Something's not going good. Uh, Paul Boyer, the Red Wings equipment manager, has been off. So this is off record. It's only a rumor. We don't know. But rumor. Paul, it's a rumor. Paul Boyer, the Red Wings equipment manager, he's off record as saying that boy has some serious hygiene issues. The smell from the wow. cat's bag truly robs the locker room of oxygen. So he's not really thinking about his uh, teammates as well. That's not very good. Alex, so I apologize. I said five seasons earlier. Uh, Alex has played six seasons of um, uh, six full seasons. By only only completing four out of those six seasons for full 82 games. Uh, this year, he's only completed 71. So that's pretty weak as well. Doesn't matter how many games are left. Uh, his Instagram account <laughs> only his Instagram account only has 110,000 followers, which isn't a very good look. Um, his uh, the average I I, I uh, calculated the average of his Red Wings teammates, and the average is 144,000. Uh, followers mm. per player so he's not very well liked in detroit either <laughs> um he leads the red wings with the most shots on net uh with 194 uh, uh 194 i apologize he leads the red wings with most shots on net but he has taken over a thousand shots away from the net so that's pretty oh. terrible his shooting yeah. percentage is at his career worst 12.2 percent um when i googled what happened to alex to this is what google's told me uh, and I quote, things have changed. Oh, things have changed a lot over the last two years for the all star to bring it. The 26 year old forward has changed team twice. Um, he's looking to regain stability after uh, signing a four year, thirty one and a half million dollar contract in Detroit. Mm. So even Google knows he has to regain stability. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's too bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, so in 2017, let's see if the hobby likes him here in 2017. Uh, that's when his young gun came out. It has a pop count of 552, uh, with a gem rate of 41%. That's a little better than normal, Josh, or is that about average? Uh, it's about average. It's about average. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty ugly card too there. Um, but, it, but it's some good news for Alex to bring it fans, all five of them. Uh, it's up 22% in the past couple of weeks. Uh, but overall macro view, it's down 5% in three months. So, you know, maybe a good time to pick up his cards. Maybe not. Uh, maybe a good time to sell his cards too. So I don't know, but uh, okay. we all know to bring it can do better. Were you originally happy when he, he was traded to Ottawa, right? Right. Yeah. Were you excited when that originally went down? I was, um, I was curious to see how it would play out. I didn't like the first round we gave to get him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't do you know like who that became? Round. Oh, I need Hasselhoff. No, I don't. Okay. I don't. I'm sorry. I should. That's okay. So what happened in Ottawa? He just didn't like it, right? Everything was fine until he left. No, there was no hard feelings, really. We kind of felt like, you know. He had he, words, right, about like, and kind of. Yeah. He said he never really tried. He's like, I never really tried anyways. Just very casual. And, and that matched what we all thought anyways, right? We just didn't want to say it, but we were saying it. 
So I, I don't, I don't, I don't think too highly of him. He's a young man. He's got yeah. a new family. All the best to you, buddy. But stay away from my team. Not interested anymore. Not, not a real smart career move to say to basically go on record saying he didn't try with the team. Yeah, I wasn't good, man. It, it doesn't give a lot of confidence to GMs and other teams that might be no. interested in you in the future. Okay, so be a better professional. Mm-hmm. Bill wears his heart on his sleeve, which we love that, and <laughs> nominates Alex DeBrincat as our first player on the struggle bus this week. And I think this is another guy who's already been on the struggle bus this year, but I had to go with Mason McTavish. I love him. Who, so this is a guy, this is like my Shane Pinto. Okay. Okay. Now, now I don't think, you know, he hasn't gotten suspended for gambling or anything like that. But <laughs> you... I, I just thought, man, this kid is like so big. He's t- so talented. Was awesome. What was it? Two summers ago for the, the world juniors. He was a star. Right for Team Canada, he was it. He was it, and so young too. Came in the NHL really young. I'm like, this kid really, I think, has everything you need to be a star in the NHL. So I kind of went in on Mason McTavish at, at the time. And again, I'm not. I haven't sold out everything yet or given up on him. But this point, and I think you know, the lesson to me here with McTavish is uh, circumstances can mean a lot in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And you just look at this whole Ducks situation this year. Yeah, it doesn't seem very pretty it's chaotic. at all. So the 21-year-old Anaheim Ducks forward, just two assists in the last 10 games played. That's not good. Ouch. On the season, he has 17 goals, 23 assists for 40 points in 58 games played. Pretty much his stats from last year, which he were in which he had eight, 17 goals, 26 assists, three points more, 43 and 80 games played. So he's a little bit better point per game because he has played 22 less games so far this year than last year, but kind of not the big jump that I certainly was hoping for, or I think people in Anaheim or certain hobbyists that have invested in his cards as well. Again, his his situation in Anaheim has been a little bit of a dumpster fire on that team. Well, only the Sharks and Blackhawks have had worse seasons than the Ducks. The team's record is 24, 43, and 3. And yeah, you know, just to give you another indication of kind of where they are at, McTavish's 17 goals and 40 points are fourth best on the team this season. Oh. He's been centering the Ducks' second line with the team's leading scorer, Frank Batrano, and then uh, Ryan Strom as his wings. Getting Who's time their first on the- line? Leo Carlson. Oh, yeah. Troy Terry and somebody. I, I want to say. It's always the third guy, the third amigo. I never remember. They have some good talent, though. They, of course, they have Leo Carlson, who a lot of people are high on as a rookie. Yeah, yeah. Another rookie, Her- Pavel Minchukov, right? I can't uh, say Mason, his name. Yeah, Mason McTavish, of course. And then they got Cutter Gauthier from... Yeah, that's right. ...from Philadelphia. Now, would Mason you be o- worried about Gauthier, given kind of the circumstances with him in Phila- Philadelphia, how he sort of forced his way out of the team? No, I think it's kind of crappy. He's going to the Ducks. <laughs> like it's he's, you, you go, you know. But if he was coming to your team, would you be? Ah, no, I, I'd rather not. No, thank you. Okay, that was yeah. that's that sounded a little messy there, and there that's one of those stories where there's more than we all know, and it's probably not good. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I think McTavish will turn it around though, Josh. I, I think Mason's too good of a player. He, he's I I, th- I think he'll turn it around. It'll just take a bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole Cutter Gauthier thing, what I was okay with everything until I heard stories like John LeClaire went up to watch his college games and he refused to see him. No, I didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> that Legion of Doom there. Come on. Yeah, that's wild. That's, you kind of snub your nose at a NHL great, or, you know, a pretty good player like that. Flyer great on top of it. Flyer great, yeah. Yeah, that's so. crazy, man. Brutal. Okay, Sorry, Montreal so, fans. I know. So I just went over too. the core of uh, Anaheim, right? You got Carlson, Minchikov, Tavish, Cutter Gauthier coming. Uh, I'm pretty proud, Troy. We are now 49 minutes and 41 seconds into recording, and we have not mentioned him yet. That's good. That's good. No, that? no, I don't think it it's been said. It hasn't happened, but we're going to no. say it right now. So when you just look at like the, the totality of the young talent, would you rather have Anaheim's young core or Chicago's? Chicago. 
just because top end talent like that you can't replace. I'm really loving. Uh, I'm really loving that guy. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I did not think he was as good as he is. Yeah, man. Okay. Ding. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, Mason McTavish is a 2021 Young Guns PSA 10 pop 1,890 with a 58% gem rate, less sold for just 48 US dollars Ooh. March 21st. Big pop, though. Almost getting near 2,000. You, how many you got, out, Josh? Mm, I, don't, I have different cards, like a lot of rookie autos. I'm not a big Young Guns collector. No, you said you were prospecting McTavish a little bit. He was your Pinto. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, I just don't have a lot of Young Guns. I have more like oh, rookie okay, autos okay. and RPAs and stuff like that. Gotcha, gotcha. His young guns is down. PSA ten is down seventeen percent in the past two weeks and forty three percent in the past three months. Yeah. Mm. Yikes. All right, we're gonna talk about Bedsy in a little bit, but before we do that, Phil, gotta yeah. make a quick um, oh mention for uh, Slab Sharks. You know them. We'll talk about that in a second. I do. Yes. They are a, a partner and sponsor of our show, so we're super grateful for their support. So we both have a mutual friend. Uh, it's Sylvan, right? Did I say it right? <laughs> I didn't, did I? Sylvain Cormier. Sylvain Cormier, okay. <laughs> or I call yeah. him Lashwine. Lashwine, yeah, he's affiliated with Slap Sharks, and I didn't know this until you put it in our notes. You're with them, too. Is everybody, is that a Canada law thing now, too, that you have to have a side game <laughs> with Slap Sharks? Yeah, Karn just went like this and scooped us all up. Uh, no, I'm so, I. it's fairly new. I'm the Ottawa uh, Ottawa representative for Slab Sharks, but I'm like, I had my only, my first show last time, and everyone's hesitant. It takes a little while to get people to get comfortable, and it's not going so great for me, but I'm I'm sticking through it. So yes, I'm the Ottawa Slab Sharks guy. If you're within 150 kilometers of the Ottawa area, I will drive to you and I will take your cards and I will keep going, Josh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was just curious what that means. So so you basically are a a liaison so that if yep. people want to submit their cards to Slab Sharks, you take them and make sure that they it. get to Slab Sharks uh, very uh, you know safe and. Yeah, if I get it me. if I get it Monday or before, it's going on the Thursday for auction. Uh right. Karn runs a tight ship, everything's phenomenal. Yeah, every, everything's uh everything's taken care of. You guys talk about it every week. Website's great. The app's coming out soon. Mm -hmm. It's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, the, the current weekly Slab Sharks eBay auctions live. So make sure you go to slabsharks.com at the earliest convenience to check out all the amazing hockey cards and place your bids. I spent some time this weekend. I'd like to do it right before our, our Monday show, Phil, looking through the auction and Holy crap. There's always a it's a hard press to say that there's better car hockey cards in an auction than in Slab Sharks. So I picked out five that stood out to me. Want to get your comments on him. Well, we can't keep ignoring him, but here's a big one. I really like the look of it. I, I get it's Love like an it. EPAC kind of thing, and it's not like a flagship, and it's the Connor Bedard 2023 Upper Deck Rookie Debut Black 101. But as far as like just good looking hockey cards great card this one's pretty awesome love it nice clean it's great i think too it's the first 101 of him in a blackhawks uniform that we don't quote oh. me on that but i'm I'm pretty sure that karn had mentioned that to us so that's not gonna help this like in 10 years though is someone gonna say that like oh i have the one of no. one it was the first 101 10 years no, but ago it, it might help this that. auction though because there's no ah, other okay. options right now to own a 101 in his gotcha. blackhawks uniform Stage of the house. So the next card uh, really sent me down a rabbit hole, but I, I really, really love. I'm a big dry cycle fan. Oh, great card, Josh. Yeah. And, and here, here's a 2014 OPG Platinum Leon dry cycle seismic gold out of 50 PSA 10. Now, yeah. what got me all confused is if you are watching on YouTube or you can go look this up if you're listening, the PSA 10 labels on all these cards say green frame seismic gold and i'm like green frame what, what does that mean was there like a very a variant that i didn't know about so i looked at all the checklists tcdb i went and looked at every card that's for sale i went and looked at every card that has a picture of these that had sold and they all have the green frame all seismic uh, golds have the green frame no this card but if you see on the label it, it, it they're all every 2014 dry sidle seismic gold that has green frame seismic gold on the label. Okay. I don't know like what PSA is thinking here. That's weird. Yeah. So if anyone knows anything, if there is, is some sort of like variation or something like that, let us know. But all that being said, hmm. 
this would probably be one of the top dry saddle rookies that I would love to. Own. Oh, great card. Seismic. And that year, uh, 2014, mm-hmm. 2015 is awesome. The layout. Mm-hmm. Love it. Beautiful the next card. one I really like Troy really likes, and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. And these are actually growing on me more and more. Do you like the lamplight? Oh, uh, no, those? I don't like them. You nah. don't like them. Huh? No, I don't like them. No, it's gimmicky. Okay. It's not a hockey card. Yeah. It's... Well, and a lot of people do think it's definitely not a cup card. No, it shouldn't. I, I agree with Grobman. Yeah, no, I, I don't like it. I don't I do. like I, it. No. Well, the, the gold ink auto on black, though, is pretty. That's, that's pretty a very sexy. nice Wayne auto there. Better so, than the blue Crayola marker they yeah. use. <laughs> no. Well, good. I, I, wouldn't like have to, I wouldn't have to compete with you for this. You don't card. have to compete with me. No. I spit yeah. on your card. <laughs> All right. Now, the next two, I got a couple of throwbacks. All right. I want to see what you think. The last one I'm very hopeful on that you're gonna like but but this one is oh awesome. yeah of course that's a beautiful card 91 upper deck 50 yeah. 50 club which featured mario lemieux wayne gretzky and brett hall autoed by all three players huge and numbered out of 999 they're, they don't go for a ton because they're at that but i just think if you were a kid of the 90s and you yeah. collect the early nine early 90s hockey cards i would look at you sideways if you said you didn't like this card because this yeah. Now, if you're 20 and this was not your era, I get it. But but we we all lived the set. It's so. almost a good way to catch somebody. Uh, show them this card. They'd be like, oh, what's that? Be like, ha, you never collected. You Like, everybody knows this card, right? Um, What's that going for now, Josh? I have no idea. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would say, I, I think maybe like 250, 300 US dollars, something like that. Oh, that seems good. I mean, three, three autos of these legends? Come on. It's great. And it's a little bit unique to have Hall on there, too, with yeah, you more think of typically like Wayne and Mario and Gordy Howe or yeah, something like that. But Hall was ripping next, it up there, though. Then the next one, you fan of this one? <laughs> Proby uh, from '88, '89. Yeah, '88 yeah. OPT Bob Probert. Yeah. Oh, it's a Rookie ten. Card. Look at that, eh? A ten. No, yeah. you, you you know what the pop is on this? You want to take a guess? I would think pretty heavy, like two uh, hundred. 67. Oh, really? Now, were you a Bob right? Probert guy? You like physical no, players? No, but no, I mean, I, I loved I loved the Probert Domi Wars. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. I was more of like a Peter Rorel kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's that's his rookie, eh? 88 or no? That's his rookie. Yeah, yeah. okay. No, I, I don't know too much about Probert. I know it doesn't have a good ending, but uh, I know he yeah. was very, very well loved. <laughs> yeah, pretty low pop. Uh, you know, a lot of the quote unquote junk wax junk wax era cards actually do have very low pops they really? just have the perception that there's a million of them but yeah so, 88 uh, is 88 considered junk wax getting there maybe 89 it's yeah like 89 80, is pretty yeah. junky yeah, i don't know all right if you're a canadian hockey cards collector weed especially phil because well he's affiliated with them uh strongly recommend checking out slab sharks for the ebay consignment services they make it easy to sell your cards online because they do all the work, right? Phil will even come pick Everything. them up. If you live yeah. in California, Phil is guaranteeing he'll drive ah. to your house and pick them up. <laughs> I lied. That won't happen. <sighs> all you have to do is drop off your cards at the local show or they have representatives that can take care of them or you can just send them to Slab Sharks directly. And then they take all professional photos, make the cards look great. They list them for you, answer any buyer questions, hunt down payment from winners, ship them to Canada or the U.S., handle any post-sale issues. If you just woke up for a years long coma and you haven't heard the Slab Sharks is offering a 98% payout rate on all Connor Bedard cards due June 1st, well, uh, welcome back to the world. And now you know it's the best way to sell your Bedsies. So head to slabsharks.com for complete consignment information and to start consigning your cards with them today. Happy news! Happy news! All right. Here we go, Phil. Let's do it. So we got to give an update on. Road to Infinity. This is probably going to be our most impactful date or update to date. Okay. It's where we were watching like a hawk, the 2023-24 Upper Deck Connor Bedard, Young Guns PSA 10 pop count. We expect this card to be a record breaker. So yeah. before we get into the updated pop count, I'm going to see if you're surprised by the number. What's your take on the whole Bedard Palooza so far? I love it. I like it. Yeah. I like the chaos. It's crazy. I, I don't, I, I, I'm allowed to like certain things. We're all allowed to like certain things and not yep. like certain things. I love the mania. I don't like the pricing is a bit bonkers, but it's opportunity for other things, right? 
Do you own any Connor Bedard cards? I own one Connor Bedard. Bidip, 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 bidip. I own one Bedard card, um, and it's the Canadian Junior one. I bought three okay. boxes, so I basically paid a thousand dollars for one Bedard card. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't get a Leo Carlson. Um, mm. I got that Junior one. You want it? No. I don't know. Okay, maybe Troy does. I don't know. Cook me dinner. You can have the card. <laughs> we root for Team USA, and we have no success. So no. Th- that's our story. I'm Team Sens. No success. So, so you, have you feel like you resisted the fault? You you haven't opened up any series two, trying to get a young guns. Uh, yeah, the three boxes. I bought oh, okay. three box. I paid. I bought oh, three boxes oh, for oh, a thousand that was series bucks. Two. Gotcha. Yeah, I yeah, series it. two. Oh, that's right. You opened them on. Uh, yeah, I couldn't watch that night, but that's okay. I I wasn't I wasn't planning on buying them. Uh, buying them. I there was just in front of me. I had money burning in my pocket. I did it. Why not? It's fun. Did that kind of quell the urge that you had for that then, or is it creeping back where you want to do it more? No, I won't buy anymore. No, okay. no, no. Well, without further ado, that's a French word. We got to update the road to infinity. <laughs> it's been four days since our last show, and the Connor Bedard PSA 10 Young Guns pop count now sits at 337, a mere 229 additional PSA 10s in the last four days. Now, what do you think of that? Wow, I think uh I think that's insane. How high do you think that's gonna go? Um, I looked up Makar's uh Makar Makar's pop is almost at four thousand for his young guns. So yeah. I, like would he be a good compare? I mean, no one can be compared, but that's... the two highest young guns pop counts for PSA 10 yeah. are Kaprizov, who's just about five thousand, and okay. then Jack Hughes, who's about forty five hundred. Hughes is more than Makar. Yes. Wow. So what's Bedard? I Ooh. I believe Bedard will be over ten thousand. Yeah. So like I don't want that card. What do I care? I don't want that. Or you'd want all ten thousand of them because that's how you. <laughs> no more questions. Um, no more. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's that's. I, I think the kid's a stud, but I I, I could care less for a, a young gun slab base card. To be honest, I'd like an two hundred twenty nine more in four days. <laughs> so crazy get an exclusive get an helper stay away from the base you know what i think that's what's going to happen josh this this yeah. crazy crap's going to happen and people are going to go to the outbursts more and the exclusives maybe the well and these all have to be expressed too because you're not turning these around this fast if you're sending them in for 25 dollars a card grading right well, did you get my group chat text i've been waiting since january 5th for my order yeah yeah thanks bedards Okay, so there's 337 Young Guns PSA 10s. It's crazy. That's out of 656 that have now been graded for a 51% gem rate. So we're, we're probably at the point of, I'm not a statistician, but we're probably at the mm-hmm. point of statistical significance where I'm guessing it'll be around a 50% gem rate for the card. Which would be a little high for the average. Which would be a little high based on recent, uh, but probably better than like, on the low end, a guy like Trevor Zegris is about 28%. Oh, okay. Or Matt Boldy is really low, too, and some of that. And So, it, to me, 50% is probably best for... Because if you're opening the box, yeah, it's not good when their corners are... Edges are kind of chewed up or corners no. are soft. But, but if you have one, you, you then want that lower gem rate because it means the pop will grow slower. So, Yep, good point. All right. There's our road to infinity update there. Now the next story we got to get into a little bit of news over the last couple of days. We oh, have yeah. Wolfie who's heating up a little bit here, Phil. Yeah. Now 24 goals on the season, sitting at 846 regular season career goals, mm-hmm. 48 goals now away from tying Wayne and 49 from being the all time leading goal scorer in NHL history. He's so 38 years old. Looks like he's 60. <laughs> anti Tom Brady, right? Yeah. The season start off brutal for so I went, I did game by game. New Year's Day, he had seven goals. New Year's he, Day? New Year's Day, he had seven goals. What? Pretty, yeah. On the That's season. crazy. Up to 24 now. So he's got 16 goals in his last 23 games. Okay. Well, that's picked it up. Yeah, picked it up quite a bit. There's 13 games left in the year. So he should finish. I'm guessing by the end of the year, so let's say conservatively, he scores what four more goals, 
five more goals, then he would have 43, 44, 43 left to tie 44 to get the record. Yeah, what and do you think? You think he's going to do it? I want to hear you first. What you you first? I asked first. Uh, no, I don't think he's going to do it. I, I think he's going to play till he gets it. And I, I really like the way Carl well, put sucks. it on our last show. Think... It, it's a matter of how he gets the record. Is he going to yeah. limp for three years? And It's terrible. And, I hope he doesn't. Or what I really hope he does is because he's kind of known for, again, sort of being the anti-Tom Brady, right? He doesn't he kind of takes care of his body like a frat boy a little yeah. bit. Right. And he eats whatever he wants, pounds, Coca-Cola's on hard the miles, hard miles. And that, that catches up to you. I don't uh, think 30... he's going to do it for that reason. So, so what happens then? Do you think he, he gets hurt or do you think he just falls off a cliff play wise or just, uh, cause, or do you think he just does, isn't going to care and is just going to retire? I don't know. I I love Ovechkin. My heart wants him to get it, but my brain doesn't think he will. And I think the only way he will will be kind of what you, you Karn, and uh, Troy said on the last episode. It, he won't get it gracefully. It'll be a circus yeah. act. It'll be the. It won't be the Washington Capitals winning hockey games. It'll be the Alex. O, let's get Alex Ovechkin goals. And I hope it doesn't turn into that because. I mean, I don't okay. Let, let's say it takes him four years to get it, right? Broken back, the whole bit. He gets 10 more empty netters. Let's say it takes him four years. In 20 years, are people going to remember that it no. came exactly? So I think you're right. He's going to try and do it as long as he can. I think extenuating circumstances will let him not, like injury. You know? Well, and actually, on our last show, what I wish the a counter, I don't even know if it's a counterpoint, but I, what I wish I would have brought up. Because I do really like how Karn mentioned gracefully. Mm -hmm. I think that matters in the moment. But but when you think of a lot of these legendary all-time athletes, you know, some of them quit on top, but others sort of play till they literally can't anymore. And Gretzky was not amazing his last couple. But does anyone nope. care at this point? No. Uh, Michael Jordan was a shell of himself his last two years. And people get... Like I said, in the moment, it's not great and it's not a good look, but it doesn't take real long for people to focus more on you, the athlete when he was at his best Agreed. or the, the whole of the of the career. I just think it's a really unique situation in Washington, too. And I'd be really conflicted as a fan because on one hand, yeah. you yeah. don't want him to get the record in another jersey and you probably want him to get the record. But if it means that your team's going to stink for the next three years. Do you really want that yeah. either? Let's check this out, Josh. So I looked up Ron Francis and Timu Solani. Okay. Their last yeah. two years, Ron Francis in his second last year played 68 games, 10 goals. He usually scores almost 30 Ron Francis. Yeah. So the, the miles get on there. Timu Solani is a sniper right on the ducks. His last two years, he didn't even play 60 games. Uh, sorry. He played 64 his last year, 46 the year before he didn't even get, he only got 21 goals combined for his last two years. That's Timo Solani. And he only got 21 goals in two years, uh, yeah. nine and 12. So, I mean, I, I looked that up before we were, it's not going to be easy, man. And it's going to turn into a circus act and it sucks. I don't want mm -hmm. it to, but it will, you know, he, I, I mean, Ovechkin's awesome, but let's be honest. He, 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 he does like being main character syndrome a little bit, right? Well, of course. I was exactly. whole life. I whole life. He's been the top dog. Yeah. So he's going to, I think he's gonna steal. He's not gonna let it go. He wants. He he can't. It's that old guy. I I still wanna. I still wanna have it kind of thing. You know. I think, interestingly enough, this last stretch of twenty games, he's gonna go until he gets the record. If he finished the season with ten goals, he might okay, have just said, "I don't want to yeah. do this anymore." But but if if you're like forty two goals away, you're gonna go. Because in his mind, he thinks that's a that's next year, right? In in his mind, forty goals is nothing. Circus turning into a circus, but it's so close, so close, mm -hmm. less than fifty. <laughs> Alexander Vechkin is a two thousand five six Young Guns PSA ten pop one thousand two hundred six thirty seven percent gem rate. Last sold for three thousand five hundred thirty nine U S dollars on March twenty first, up about seven percent in the past two weeks and up three percent in the past three months okay so for our next story i'm really excited to 
because I don't even know what I think about this yet. So I don't know if you saw this, but there's a whole like weird situation in the basketball card world. Okay. Between Victor Wembanyama, who's the Connor Bedard of basketball. Okay. Generational talent. Is. He's from France. He's seven foot four, amazingly skilled player. But and this is really sad, I think, for basketball card collectors. We have this weird sort of transition between Panini and Fanatics, where Panini yeah. still has the NBA license, but Fanatics is using their big checkbook and they're signing all these applets to exclusives. So there are no licensed Victor Wembanyama autographed rookie. There will be none. Okay. And, and so that that's like if if Fanatics signed Bedard and we went this whole year without a single rookie auto. It'd be awful. What Fanatics is doing is they're they're trying to create autos without licensing that you know still look good and have relevance. And so when Binyama threw out the first pitch, uh, I don't know when it was at a Yankees game. And, and here's like an example of the card they made out of it. And so, but that's okay. kind of all just like the backstory. What I really want to talk about is so on this card, which is a 101, it's a headshot of him in a Yankees jersey. It's street clothes. Mm-hmm. And it's got some sort of patch, which is kind of random and stupid. Ebbets Field, it's like the clothing. It's like Old Navy design. or something. Yeah. And then he autos a card. But in addition to that, with the same pen, he kind of went artistic, I, I guess, is a good way to put it on the whole thing. He oh, drew he a did little, that. A, yes, he drew a little alien. He drew That's a UFO. Ridiculous. He put a Coach Co. mustache on the on his face <laughs> uh, in the picture. Oh, yeah, he did. Of the card. And then like a little sweat or teardrop. Coming down. What his is it, face. gangster? Now he killed somebody. Okay. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what's going on there. But so here's my question. Here's why I wanted to bring it up. Okay. Do Do you like the idea of an athlete taking the pen and whatever you call it, doodling doing this crap, or doing it on the card? Does that? No, city. No, I. I. That's. I think this card looks like like horrible. No, that's silly. I don't like it. No. Mm-hmm. You like it? Oh, Josh likes it. He likes it. I don't. It. No, no. As a collector, I don't. But, but okay. But here's my sticking point and why okay. I can't just come and outright say it's horrible. It where, where there's so much manufactured scarcity and so in the hobby in general, and I'm not just talking hobby, and so like such a dearth of actual scarcity. Yeah. One thing you can say about this card is it is a unique 101. It is. Yeah. There's only you're one. not gonna find another. Victor Wemmen. It's not a card I would enjoy owning or enjoy looking at. It's so hideous. I'm... Yeah. It's it's a really okay. So first of all, I don't like the non-licensed cards. I think that's that's no, I don't either. I think that's super silly. And there you don't need any other reasons to know you want to print money. Second of all, what do aliens and UFOs have to do with basketball and Victor Webb and Yama? Like, I don't want I don't want I don't him to draw things on my card that he was watching YouTube videos on the night before and he just has it on his mind, you know? Sure. Like if it was maybe a basketball or like, like I hope your life is a three point shot or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. You know? So as a Brady Kachuk drew a mustache on one of his cards or sunglasses, or I don't think I'd like, like a, that. You, you wouldn't like that. I don't okay. think I'd like that. No, I, I okay. just, just, yeah, I don't. And I, I don't know why I don't have the vocabulary to explain why. No, I no. Your own personal feelings aside, yeah. Do you think a card like this would sell? Like, what would the hobby in general? What's your prediction? How if like Bedard did supposed- that on his one hundred and one, or, or just yeah, yeah. Do you think that a, a card like this that's so obviously unique that's been cu- highly customized by the player would sell well, or do you think in general the people would be like, "This is he"? It looks like a two-year-old doodled on it. I, I think it, it looks like a two-year-old doodled on it. I think it's mm-hmm. like. That's just so ugly to me with what he he just ruined. He defaced a card, mm-hmm. you know. I don't know. Maybe someone. I think that's a real personal preference thing. Just sign the card, man. <laughs> you know. Okay. So now, before we move on to new product releases, you had put a note about the, and I don't know a lot about this, so you're gonna have to kind of fill me in a little bit about the Shohai Otani kind of situation. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you didn't hear? Okay, well, I, I don't know all of it, but he had a translator. He had a... Oh, Josh, I didn't know. Okay, so he had a translator. Um, His translator was uh, laying sports... Placing bets. bets. Yeah, placing bets with his money. I think that's it, right? But then, like, that's very dangerous with... You don't want to get pintoed. 
Excuse me. Yeah, no, I, I think I think you're right. I think obviously to not placing bets well because I think down four and a half million dollars or something like that, which is yeah, he was in the negative. Yeah, I mean, and so it seems like that the issue is going to be was this translator acting independently without Chohai Otani knowing, or was he acting as a proxy? I, for Otani and placing the bets on his behalf, right? Is that sort of the? Yeah, the I don't know which one it is. I I, I know Shohei. Rep, what I do know from the article I read yesterday, uh, Shohei, as soon as he caught wind of it, he he told an authority, like as soon as he had an sure. a, a shitty feeling in his stomach. Oh, you might want to mark that one. Yeah, but but okay. That being said, though, he also could have called the translator and said. Uh, I'm going to give you two two million dollars to take the fall from here. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But he wouldn't do that. Look at him; he's such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't... It, it's a baseball situation, and obviously, you know, as sports fans and collectors, we'll kind of look at it. But but I do think the larger kind of interesting topic here is this interesting spot all these leagues are in now, as they are getting more and more in bed with yeah. gambling. Yeah. And so it's like they it seems a little two faced at time to get all righteous on athletes that get caught betting when you're sitting at like you're at the fan duel suite, yeah, at your local arena placing bets right there. The Sens have a uh, betting on their helmet. That's who sponsors our helmets is Bet Nine Nine or whatever. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's, it's even worse for my team. So, so Pinto yeah. has to yeah. wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous it's 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 so silly the whole world's in a reset man we're just trying to figure everything out now but yes but then I you know you obviously don't want players betting on games because they have the ability to, to change the game to change the game and, yeah. and i'm in full disclosure here too i have nothing against it i just don't i'm not a big sports gambler i don't um i don't know it just doesn't do it for me i like but, college football that's what i bet on I'm not oh, going to yeah. go be a LSU quarterback anytime soon. So everybody calm down. <laughs> we'll see where that, where this all goes. Yeah. All right. We're going to go to new product releases and uh, well, oh, after a favorite. couple week break. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll get into that. So, uh, and actually I'm, I'm being open-minded, Phil. I'm, I'm not no, going to be close-minded. All right. So 2023, 24 SP game used comes out April 3rd, about 10 days from now. Another big Bedard set. Right, anything with 2023-24 is going to have a lot of attention on it and eyeballs to see mm -hmm. what new Bedsy cards we have coming out of it. So uh, strap on your bucket, Phil, and snap that chin strap. We're going to you know, <gasps> go bananas as a hobby Jeez. again. I don't know if, if the hobby will go as crazy over this. No. Definitely not a Series 2. I think the next sort of like hobby rocket ship is going to be sb authentic oh yeah future watches on the future watches gonna go nuts so yeah so i said i'm not gonna be negative but anyone that listens or watches regularly knows i'm not the hugest game use fan and, and primarily it's because i just have a, a strong opinion that maybe it's unfair but that it should all be game used i, I think when you your name you is think. game used that and I actually think that I've said this before, but so sorry if I'm being repetitive. Even make it triple the amount of box cost, make it a super high end product, but, yeah. but knowing what you're gonna get because, like, we'll get into it too. It's like this, it's not a big box, it's a one pack box with six cards. And when you spend the kind of money that this is gonna cost and you get like a manufactured patch out of it, it to me, that just leaves me really unsatisfied. What uh, what's the price point on that? Right now, two hundred US. Oh, yeah. I think so two ninety like nine Canadian. It's pre selling at like four hundred one games right now. So. It, the cards are ugly, man. There's anyway. Okay. Well, 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 we'll we'll try to be as open minded as we can, and and I'm okay. definitely going to do that. So there's four thousand six hundred seventy nine unique cards in the set. <laughs> okay. It's a, 280 card base set. So you got regular vets where there's like a hundred kind of your good players. They, they break off like, like current veterans into three categories. So it's like vets, stars and all-stars. So then your stars are your better players. There's 20 of them. Then there's 44 all-stars, 36 legends. 
and and then 80 authentic rookies. All the key rookies are in this, so it's not like flagship where you have Leo Carlson and Bedard in Series 2 and then Logan Cooley and Adam Fantilli in Extended. Everybody's here. So you got Bedard, Luke Hughes, Leo Carlson, Fantilli, Logan Cooley, Brock Faber. Yay! Love Faber! I get to say key rookie in a Minnesota Wild player, so that's kind of... Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You got your goalies, Devin Levi, Dustin Wolf, all those guys. So they're all in SP game views, which is a plus for the set. Mm -hmm. For the base and legends, there's a ton of parallels like there is. The base cards are out of the jersey number, which is kind of cool. Uh, so we have uh, embroidered in history again. No, what like here's an example if you're watching the. Oh, it's kind of nice. Which is out of 97. It's kind of a clean looking card. So if you're a Kale McCarr, it's going to be out of eight. If you're McDavid okay. out of 97. Then there's a red parallel out of 299, gold out of 199, purple out of five, and a green 101. What's interesting to me, and this is going to make most sense if you're watching, is we're showing the base McDavid because it's out of 97. You can see it on the card. What does the red parallel look like? Because <laughs> the card's like all red. That's basically. not the that's the base one you're showing? That's the base one. It has to be because the red's Weird. out of 299. Bizarre. Hmm. And then the other thing I find kind of interesting is that the 101 parallel is green. So a lot of times we see gold being the 101 or black. Weird. What do you think of green as a 101 color? Do you like that? I don't like it. No, I like a green. I associate green without a 10. Because of like Emerald Surge. Emerald and, Surge, yeah. Yeah. The rookies are called authentic rookies in SP Game Used. The, the They have a, a kind of an interesting numbering sequence to base again are on a jersey number so bedards will be out of 98 red parallel is not 299 it's 200 plus their age oh you know, this is <laughs> gold okay. is 100 plus their draft year Ooh. then you have crystal which is a unique authentic rookie parallel kind of interested to see what that looks like out of 25 purple out of five and then uh green 101 now, what's interesting about Bedard is in the in just the the base parallels for authentic rookies. Not, this is not autoed or patched. There's no purple out of five and no green one one. That's kind of odd. I wonder why they did that. I looked at the checklist like ten times because I thought I. So if I missed it, I'm sorry and pointed out, but I'm pretty positive that that's the case. Hmm. Then after that, Phil, you got a whole bunch of auto and memorabilia variations and parallels off the base cards. So like the base has like a base jersey, there's one in three packs, base all stars jersey. So for the better players, one in four, base star jersey, one in 15 packs, premium numbered. So they're using premium as which is kind of interesting to me. You don't see very often a lot on the checklist for this. So I actually reached out to Billy at Upper mm-hmm. Deck and I'm like, what does premium mean? And he got back to me and said, well, that could be like patch or it could be a stick. It could be a glove, a tag, probably. So it sounds like that maybe they're trying not to lock themselves into just patches nah. and maybe offering a variety of there. Very loose set. Very loose. Whole ton of parallels, though, for auto and memorabilia. You can go on the checklist, check them all out for, for the base cards, for the legends, and then for the... Uh, authentic rookies do you uh, so i got a question you about legends so we've just had parker's champions come out were you yeah. a fan of that uh I, I like sp legends much better okay yeah now you have legends again do yeah. you when new sets come out do you think that do you like that they include subsets for legends do you think it should be few and far between few and far between i mean it's getting a little a uh, little saturated you know like I, I i like how you and troy bring up sometimes like why don't we go easy on some of the gretzky inserts you know Just pick up the value a bit more so I, I i've uh i think they should go easy a little bit you know easy. every every time i've said that thing about gretzky people disagree with me no i agree and you might you. too but i feel like there's so many Gretzky auto options that it's too many, too many, many. too many. Mm -hmm. And they're about a thousand bucks, right? So a low end Gretzky auto is about a thousand bucks. If you can get something cheaper than a thousand, that's a pretty good deal. But usually it's a really ugly card or he's in Mm -hmm. St. Louis or Rangers or something. How many times do you think that guy's signed his name in his life? Oh my God. I don't understand, man. It's crazy. eh? 
Yeah, I think of that all the time. I don't and he know. takes so much time. He doesn't do this yeah. like scribble crap that all these young athletes. Beautiful do, so. autograph. Yeah, beautiful autograph. Yeah. So again, you can get about every flavor of parallel that you're looking for from jersey patches to autos to jersey autos. A lot of the autos in SP game used look like they're stickers. Yeah, it's just yeah. sell sheet, which isn't great. Um, any new grooves there? Anything on new grooves? I think that's, that's yeah, like there's their a only big, like there's a big thing. set there. They don't have any pictures so far, so I couldn't oh, okay. add any of those, but a lot of parallels there too. Now, where you get into, I think the inserts is where a lot of people identify with SP game use. Probably, oh, well, here's the authentic rookies. I mean, the cards yeah. look nice, but and this is a, we're showing a patch auto, but again, it's kind of got that sticker area. Yeah, and the patch is small, it's... patch is small yeah so like a typewriter put the 43 out of 49 it just seems like it's the upper decks like lower team that's doing it or something i don't know i guess uh, they're not hiring me anytime soon probably not no probably not that's okay a lot of people like these cards the draft day marks i'm not a fan for two reasons. i don't like them number one they're manufactured mm -hmm. i don't know why they they have to be it's easier i'm sure and then in the, the next reason is just a personal opinion of mine I don't love uh, signing fabric. Yeah, you stole it from me. It bleeds. It bleeds out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a fan. Like even like the cups, like scripted swatches. I think they're called. Just not yeah. for me. No, not I don't like that. I, makes me itchy. I can appreciate why people like them, but so the draft day marks are all at a thirty-five. They're ba they're the name plates of the players' last name. So a guy like Matthew Nyes in the example we're showing will have five different cards and, and people like to collect them. You know, certain people will collect their own last name made of multiple players. And that can be kind of fun. These just sell for a lot of money. And for a manufactured patch yeah. of an auto that bleeds into fabric, not my bag. Now, if it was like a player, even player warned, I think I might feel differently about it even. Mm -hmm. And I can maybe get past the auto being on fabric, but Again, not my thing. I like the letter marks better. Mm -hmm. Anyway. One RPA I do really like, aside again from the sticker auto, are these inked rookie sweaters. Again, you get the smaller patch window, but I, and we're showing an example of Simon Edmondson, the Detroit Red Wings rookie. The, the card design does look really nice, though. It's a, it's nice. a design I, I can get behind, and mm -hmm. never hurts to have a nice Red Wings patch there. Mm -hmm. The eyebrows uh, on him, eh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I, I do want to go back to the draft day marks for a second here. Okay. So starting last year, they did Hall of Famers like Gretzky, because remember, people are going bananas over that. They did bring that back this year where they have Hall of Fame marks, and it's got legends like Bobby Hall, Bobby Orr. Oh, cool. Lindros, Gordy Howe. I don't so the auto thing how they get how? Gordy Howe is an autoed because I don't know how a sticker auto would work on these cards, but they even have guys like Henri Richard. What? So I, they he... must, I, I'm because on the checklist, it wasn't specific if they were autoed or not. Why but, would you make? Yeah. I, I don't want a manufactured patch with a non auto but... with their, just a, the letters. That just a letter? their last name. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I think a lot of people buy these, not fully under, like I remember when I really started to get interested in hockey cards, yeah. I thought this, this is like the ultimate, right? It's like the nameplate from the back of their jersey. Yeah. And then you learn that they're not. They're yeah, just, I know. They're not I, even from jerseys. It's like, oh. I, I just find it crazy how the it's called game used. Yeah. <laughs> I, anyway, we, I don't want to beat a dead horse here. Okay, but, but, but now, now here's some stuff you might get in behind. Because I think this is where the set does live up to its name a little bit. So okay. there's a whole big section of cards. It's not, it's like multiple subsets that have relics from key NHL events in 2023. So that include stuff like the all-star game, Stanley cup playoffs, Stanley cup finals, global series, stadium series. So here's a, like a game used net cord of Jack Eichel from the Stanley cup finals. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't like it. Okay, why? I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to sound like a hypocrite. Like I love RPAs. I love a good patch game used card. I'm a huge Cup guy. I don't care about the net. Like I, yeah. Maybe if I, well, maybe, maybe it's, it's a little disassociated me, right? from the player. 
Yeah, you know what? That's a, that's a very good way of putting it. What does that have to do with the player? Now, if there's if it's a goalie card, would that change it for you? Like if that was Patrick Waugh and that was his net, maybe? Yeah, and that was the net he was defending? I don't know, Josh. I'm really picky. I don't know. No, it's okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I I just don't like the way it looks. I just, like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It just seems like, like, come on, you want to buy a part of the net, don't you? Like, oh, I'd rather mm-hmm. get the guy's autograph. No, no, you want the net. Take the net. Like, I don't want the net. <laughs> So, so they yeah. have net cords, they have logo patches. Those kind of scare me too, because I think those can be manufactured at times where they try yeah. to put like the little logo in a spot. They have tag parallels. Are you a big tag guy? No. The glass no. too. They put the no. glass in. Yeah. What is that? You can knock someone out with that. Puck relics. Are you a fan of those? No. Okay. No. Then uh, here's another one from like the All-Star game. They have relics from all the oh. mascots gritty yeah so so he, he here's like my challenge with something like this is i can appreciate i can laugh at a card like this i think it's kind of funny but if i'm opening a 200 dollars box of cards with six cards and my main hit that's your hit is and, and not and not even great like they have like all the mascots you can't even name it's like nordy from the wild that's probably you, not a hit though Oh, oh yeah. This that's a considered a hit. Sure. Uh, that should be an Easter egg. That should yeah. So they that's no. no it's on the I, checklist. They're all on the checklist. Yeah, I, I would I would absolutely lose my poop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would not be happy. And I'm a UP fanatic. I love UP. If I got the 101 UP card, I'd want my money back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing, and Billy had teased this on her show is they did do a special two card set of one player 2023 debut net cord relics well there's one player on the checklist we give you a hint it's not trey fix walansky it's not uh, <laughs> your boy Betsy. interestingly so they to me this is kind of like the upper deck reaction and i'm glad they're trying stuff like this even if it misses of like the tops putting the patch from the first game into cards like so their mlb debut patch i like that i thought that, that was they a cool have, idea yeah. yeah and so i think this is upper deck trying to do something similar so there's net cords from connor bedard's first game okay in, in in the cards there's two of them there's a base and a parallel bases out of 35 then there's a gold parallel out of five okay um i wish there was like a 101 that had maybe something more to it that, that he yeah. had worn or something like that but i'm glad that they're trying to mirror i guess some of the success that fanatics has had doing that and and fanatics almost has like a an unfair advantage phil because they make the jerseys so they can make a jersey sew a patch on it have the player wear it take the patch off and put it in a card yeah it's a little harder for upper deck to do that but i don't know do you think these will be real popular think people go nuts over net cords from connor bedard's first game i do i think that i'm not gonna go nuts for it but i think other people will absolutely I just, you know, and I think anything Bedard now is going to go nuts, whether it's uh, his Fruit of the Looms patch or his uh, net cord patch. <laughs> or... <laughs> yeah, I, I will not be collecting those, though. I'm not. I, I like a good classic hockey card, the yeah. jersey patch in it. That's as far as I go. Yeah. There's a new insert called Deep Cuts that has base and then parallels that they're die cut, I think, in the middle that kind of shows maybe some color underneath them kind of cool in in a way it looks like sticker autos again interesting here though and and what we've seen with the number of these 2023-24 sets i'm guessing that this card is maybe a little complicated to make or needs a longer lead time because this is one example in the set where there are bedard cards but they're team canada oh interesting it's like the dopey like how the woody cards were Mm -hmm. team canada because those took they had to send those into production before he was drafted. Okay. And they didn't know what team he was going to be on. I'm guessing that if I had to guess, that would be the case here. I don't know about you, but and you, you had gotten a, a program of excellence card. It sounds like in your series mm-hmm. two boxes. Yeah. Maybe as a Canadian, you feel differently as an American. I have no interest in Connor Bedard and team Canada. Me Very neither. Nice. No, when I got that card, I could care less. I tried to give it to you and you wouldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably stupid because it's probably worth. I don't even know what it's worth. I, I don't. I only have it in a penny sleeve right now. I don't even know where it is. 
I'm sure it's worth hundreds of dollars, Phil. You can nah, maybe probably put it in a top loader. Yeah, maybe. Okay, then there are new grooves, right? So, are you new grooves guy? You mentioned him. I I just think when I hear a game used, I think of my Jason Spezza's uh, new grooves yeah. cards and my Chris Neal's and yeah. So what's interesting to me about new grooves is that the base are out of ten, and I then there's parallels like red, gold, purple, and green. Red is out of one ninety nine, gold is out of ninety nine, purple is out of five, and green is one hundred one. It's weird when like the parallels are way higher print runs than the base. Yeah. How does that make sense? My mind just has a hard time. I, I and it might be cool even. <laughs> I, I don't I just have a hard time wrapping my head around that. Uh, are you a Supreme Patches fan? Do you like no. the call? No. No, I don't like oh, your no, favorite player. I Why'd you why you, I don't think I don't notice you're picking all leaf people. <laughs> Matthew dies. Now you got Matthew stuff here. I know what you're doing. Anyways, let's plug off my screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to ask him out. Let's so wrap it like up these, here. Huh? I think these are game use, though. Pretty I, I believe they are. I don't know. Can you flip it? No, it's not eBay. No, I can't. They're they're all out of 15. And in addition to patches, they have a number, a number of other varieties mm. as well. So there's gloves. There's pads for goalies. That's kind of cool. That is pretty cool, yeah. Supreme sticks, which, which I think are kind of cool. But. Hobby kind of goes nuts nit. for them. I, I see people paying big bucks all the time. Inter- so that, that's kind of it. I don't want to go through the whole thing. I don't think it's up, up on Becky yet. Cardboard connection is kind of a mess. It's yeah. not there either. So no. you might have to wait a few days. But for all 4,000 cards, you can definitely go uh, check it out there. The last thing, though, I do want to show is, as we've been doing it, a lot of these 2023-24 sets is here's a little breakdown of the Bedards a flyer. included. So there's 39 unique Bedard cards. He has authentic rookies and parallels, but no purple out of five or green one one. Then there's the base auto and relics, nine total Bedard variations. There's a couple of, we didn't really highlight them, but there's a couple of retro cards, uh, 2001 or 2001 rookie crossover, 2003, 04 rookie debut. There's the net cord card we talked about from his first game mm-hmm. banner year. I feel like that's manufactured patch. Crazy. But I might be wrong idea. there. So the, none, I, none of the, do you think any of these cards have legs? Legs for longevity? I think not one of them. You don't think the draft day marks aren't going to go nuts? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. That I, oh, people go nuts, but I mean, like in, in 10 years, if yeah. you know, like five, I just, that's how I look at these things, right? What do you think it's going to cut? Wait, how many? There's six letters in Bedard, right? Yeah. Bad. What's, well, what's it going to cost to complete that one? Probably like 60,000, 10K each, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. It's going to be. <laughs> I stopped way, way. but uh <laughs> we'll probably better post this on our social media. So if you wanna yeah. there's crazy kind of cats it. out there, man. Who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows? Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a 2023-24 SB game used hobby boxes, one pack. You get six cards in each pack. Here's what you can expect, Phil. One auto or premium memorabilia card. So I think like the the gritty is that premium memorabilia. Woo! Hard pass on that. Three memorabilia or tech cards and two base set or insert cards. So it's going to be high risk, high reward, probably like any 2023, yeah. 24 set. Right now in the U.S. of David Adams, it's pre-selling for 200 U.S. dollars. And then it was sold out at Close and Char. They didn't have a price. Sold out again. Sold at, out? At 401 Games for 299 Canadian. Who's buying that for three hundred? Oh, that's crazy, man. I can't believe that sold out. That's wild. Now, when that's you crazy. buy your boxes, do you buy them mainly at a local LCS or do you yeah. use like a online retailer? Okay. No, no, I try to support my local business. I, I, but if I'm at the expo, I'll I'll try and grab yeah. a case or two, pretty cheap. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, one more quick thing I want to mention in new product releases is uh, kind of another interesting case study here is 2022-23 Synergy, which came out last. June, June twenty eighth, oh. the hobby boxes came out. Is available on EPAC as of a day or two ago. Hundred dollars a box on EPAC. Looks like what about fifteen hundred and seventy US a case. The interesting thing though, Phil, is right now if you go on Dave and Adams, Whoa, you can buy a hobby box in the US for sixty bucks. Wow. Now EPAC does have achievement cards that you can only get if you buy on EPAC, but it's it's a pretty big premium and. This is like where Upper Deck gets really caught between a rock and a hard place because 
they, they and I, I totally understand where they're coming from. They say with EPAC, we never want to undercut our hobby shops. But if you're, it seems weird to release a product on your own website that is literally 40% less yeah. for one of your retail. You know. Maybe the departments didn't talk to each other. Yeah, I just think they get stuck you get by the, the email. Fact that they don't <laughs> control. Are you a Synergy fan at all? Do you like the uh, No, no. I'm slowly turning the page on Allure, but I'm not at Synergy yet. No, okay. can't do it. Yeah. Okay. You? Um, It's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. I appreciate it's the average. Tech. I like Essential Credentials, and there's a... Uh, you can tell it's like a third cousin of it. Like a lot oh, okay. of the same yeah, technology. I can see that, yeah. All right, we're going to get into mailbag, but before we do, really quick, just want to mention that um, PWCC, real quick, they are a gong show partner and sponsor. Of course, we want to thank them for their support of our show. The current PWCC weekly auction is live. Some huge hockey cards in this week's auction you will not want to miss. Be sure to head to PWCCMarketplace.com to pick out your favorite cards, place your early bids. Jeremy Lee and I, every Sunday night, we're going to, we do our YouTube show on his YouTube channel, Sports Cards Live, where we cover all the key hockey cards ending. Starts at 8 30. Jeremy's going to co host the show on Thursday. I know. You got me squished between Karn and Jeremy. Crazy <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> and, uh, we'll we'll kind of highlight some cards there as well. And so, yeah, like, yeah. That yeah. McKinnon high gloss, I'd be all over, man. Up top there. Oh, mm. yeah. Look at that. Nice card. Nice beauty. card. A beauty card. Again, so, uh, Check out the auction, pwccmarketplace.com. Uh, there's also the fixed price marketplace as well with over 5,000 hockey cards to buy. And you can place offers on many of them too. Mailbag, Phil. Oh, boy. Questions. Uh, lots of questions. Lots, lots of, questions. of questions. Okay. First one from William Bronson. What's the strategy on Junk Wax era? Do you have any keepers from back then in your PCs? Were you even collecting back then? What gems can be pulled out of the seemingly endless boxes available. I admit to spending a bit of time and cash on those boxes when I started collecting and before I wised up. But somehow, every once in a while, I look at a card and think, hey, this is cool, and I don't care if they made a million of them. Yeah. Well, first thing I would say, William is collect what you love, man. Right? There's no right, right or wrong way to collect. I would say a lot of us middle ageish collectors have an affinity from the Junk Wax era because it was in our wonder years when we collected them. What? as kids there's always going to be a stigma associated with it but you have to be careful but there are diamonds in the the junk yeah. i guess yeah. you know there's a couple of well-known like phil could talk endlessly about the 1990 stanley cup hologram <laughs> we'll get thoughts in a second which goes for thousands of dollars uh, the 1989 tops believe it or not joe sackick rookie not opg because yeah. it has a much lower pop count can can go for a lot and so and, and i if I had to guess in the next 10 years, the narrative will change a little bit and people will feel more nostalgic versus just writing it off as garbage. But what are your thoughts? Phil? I completely agree with what you just said there, Josh. I think, I think at 10, like I'm 42, you're what, 46, 47. Yeah. When, 46. We're, when we're in our sixties and seventies, that's, it might be referenced as the junk wax era, but what if the junk wax is all, all been thrown out and there isn't much left, right? You never know. Um, but yeah, back to what you were saying about the hologram, uh, 1990 series one, uh, pro set. I've opened over three cases, never found one. Um, who answered William, you asked the question, listen, man, nineties is awesome. You just got to find what you like. Uh, there's so many, the mid nineties, uh, is like the creative era. As our friend, Jeremy Lee says, you get like uh tops mystery refractors. Look at those. Mm -hmm. They're, they're absolutely stunning cards. You got your Bowman's best. Uh, Summit High Voltage, which is a card that's actually in metal now. Is it metal, the high voltage? I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah, but that's actually a mid-90s card. That's actually mm -hmm. a mid-90s card if you find it. It's from Summit. Uh, you also get your Select Certified Mirrors and Refractors. Yeah. Beautiful cards, beautiful cards. Uh, William, find the card you like. Buy it. Buy lots of it because uh, it's probably pretty cheap for now, but you never know. It might, uh, might go up in price in the next few years. Great answer. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Discord. Dog is pilot. Awesome name. Do we know why a lot of numbered variations of cards are frequently out of 99 or like 299 instead of just being out of like 100 or 300? Oh, that's what he meant. I think it's the same psychological reason why when you go to a store and they have the price at 99 cents or $1.99 yeah. because we think it's somehow less and, and it gives the perception of being 
rarer than it actually is. That That's my guess. Do you have a different answer? I agree with your guess. And I also think the way 99 looks is cooler than one in a couple of bucks. Oh, good point. You know? Yeah, it just looks cool. Oh, boy. Yeah. Discord Irish Flyers Collector. Yeah. Who is the worst Kachuk of all time? So I'm going to say shots fired. <laughs> and this is an obvious question for you. Neil's so dead to me. Like, yeah. So easy answer. Papa Walt. Keith Kachuk is the worst Kachuk of all time because uh, he got a little too greedy with the money and he held out three times in his career. So if I had to pick, okay. it's Daddy, uh, Daddy Keith. All right. Good answer. Yeah. Instagram. Surf naked. 277. You ever surf naked? Uh, no, but I ran down. I've run down streets naked before. Okay. Pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> he says, are the Upper Deck artifacts and rookie debut sets even worth looking into for rookie cards? Will they hold their value? Obviously, Young Guns are the main attraction, but I'm curious as to what other sets are desired or looked at for rookie cards. So this is a great question in my mind, and I, I feel like you're asking the question more from the value point of view, and so I we can give a little bit more specific answer than just collect what you like, which is always the right answer for anything subjective, right? And Phil, you had talked about this earlier uh, in his own collecting where, um, you know, first of all, only value side, collect cards that you think that look cool. And those will typically, do you think other people think look cool? But there are lots of, there's gonna, especially with Bedard, there's going to be hundreds so of many. rookies yeah. that go for tons of money right away that five, six, ten years from now are going to be pretty, it's just not going to have a lot of appeal. Right. And and so it's the young guns, future watch autos, cup RPAs, the seismic golds, emerald surges, yep. orange checkers. The find out what the key and I'm trying to think of other ones off the top PMGs. of my head. I bet you the PMGs, PMGs will resurface in popularity with him. Yeah. Big time. It's those iconic cards are gonna be the safest. And uh and then there's just gonna be a lot of sort of cruft maybe is, is a way to put it a, a, a big sort of middling set of of cards that and more so than any other rookie right there's going to be bedards everywhere mm -hmm. can i add something there josh of course artifacts so to give you an example surf naked 277 i'm going to use kale mccarr again because he's my good example for high point getter in recent modern era so if you look at 2019 2020 you can't see it on the screen you're just gonna have to listen to my beautiful voice here a 2019-2020 artifacts rookie out of two out of 999 PSA 9. Okay, let's not even pretend it's slab sold for 50 bucks three months ago. Okay, three months ago. So that's out of 999. So a thousand cards, yeah. artifacts. Okay. Now let's go to a future watch raw card. Uh Kale McCarr out of 999, not inscribed or anything, $750 raw. There's what so else? many parallels now too that that I what think that I think that's a great example. And then uh, artifacts too is good because artifacts now has every numbered parallel you could yeah, think of. There's a lot of nine ninety nine, seven ninety nine, four ninety nine, four seventy five, and it's like, and especially too like when you get into there's going to be so many Bedard cards that are that at your initial like gut reaction, I think wow, this is a huge card. It's out of thirty five. Yeah, right. No one cares. But it's one it. of like seventeen <laughs> parallels. Yeah, no one cares. So, so it might not be as rare as you think. There. Our next question: Instagram JKPC seven sixteen. He said, "What's the price of Bezzy today?" People want to know. I don't know. Uh, pretty vague. Uh, um, so I'm going to say six pence, four score, fourteen pounds, and thirty seven rubles. <laughs> that an answer. That's great. Mine's four twenty sixty nine. Okay, eleven D seventy two. Uh, you know, it's going to be all over the place for a couple months. Honestly, if you crave Bedard price stability, let the market calm down. And I yeah. think you nailed that on the head, right? It's like the common cards, wait. There's going to be wait. base Please. young guns available every second of every day for the rest of your life. Now, if, if you really, really want an outburst red and there's only 25 of them or high gloss, you might have to pull the trigger, you know, put, put your big boy pants on and pull the trigger and uh, risk it a little bit there. But I think if you just wait out this this market, you'll well, like I mentioned this on our last show. I really want the OPG marquee rookie 3D. The yeah, that's a great card, Josh. But I I know it's 
$300 more right now than it will be a few months from now just because of the newness factor. Yeah. And so I'm just going to wait. Expo might pick one up at the expo. Uh, That's kind of a plan. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Phil, I'm going to let you go on this one first. Kind of a, a I don't know what's here. coming up. Yeah, I'm just doing this surprise. Chris Bryden, would you trade a raw Crosby Young Gun straight up for McDavid Young Guns? Or do you think one is higher value rate? <laughs> yeah. In a heartbeat. I think McDavid's going to be way, everyone's going to remember McDavid over Crosby. We all, I, I think, Cros, look, Crosby's a great guy. He's not, he's consistent. He's not, I don't know, man. McDavid's so much better than Crosby. And I love Crosby. I think he's great. Golden goal. Wow. Anyways, mm-hmm. let's move on. Yes, I would. All right. <laughs> so you're not a big Crosby guy, huh? I don't is know. That, I, is I that like... sacrilege in Canada, or or is it no, a little bit more divided than I think? No, it is? we kind of you, you can kind of rip on him a bit. I mean, okay. I, I like personality. I don't like boring people. Nobody normal. Nobody boring invents anything. I, I like a little, uh, you know, a little grit, a little sandpaper. You know, I I I would rather have a beer with someone I kind of don't like and has a bit of a backbone than someone who agrees with me on everything. Okay, appreciate yeah. that. The only thing that a counterpoint I would make to you is that the print runs were so much higher for in 2015 for McDavid. Than oh, Crosby. you're right. And actually yeah. the McDavid PSA 10, I think outsells Crosby, but the raw Crosby outsells McDavid as far as value. So McDavid's right now are where go for anywhere from like seven to 800 where Crosby's are in the 12 to 1300 or 11 to 1200 us range for a young gun. Yeah. For raw, for raw young gun Crosby, it's over a thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's crazy to me. That's nuts. No, I'd still want a McDavid for my collection. Okay. You know. Okay. Next question is from Luigi thirty-two. Yeah, or point one two three. He said Matthews PMG green sale discuss. There's been a couple of big Matthews PMG sales lately. There's a 2016 okay. 17, so Ricky one out of ten. The greens are out of 10. Mm-hmm. BJ's 9.5 sold on February 19th for 14,815 US. Second high sale to date. Wow. One actually sold for 17,000 in August 2022. But the one I think he's thinking about, <laughs> Phil, is 2020 Skybox Metal Universe. It's the 9798 retro. So it's the retro one that kind of people go bonkers over. Green PMG 10 out of 10. Raw. So it's like fourth year. But it's not his oh, rookie. Oh, anyways, no, whatever. no. Sold earlier this month for ten thousand five hundred ninety nine US. Huge jump up from its previous high a year or so ago when it sold for about fifty one hundred US. Of course, he's having a career year for goals. He's Phil's favorite player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help. Is that confirmed? Is that confirmed yeah. in Terra Peak? Yeah, yeah. It's probably a, my, Austin's mom doing it. First of all, yeah. So you got ten. Almost well, ten thousand five hundred US ish. Yeah, it's insane. Who's buying that card? 2020 Green PMG. It's probably Karn. Yeah, Karn's a big uh, Austin Matthews. Karn's a big right? Matthew. Man, a bunch of confused people in this country. Yeah. No, but no, PMGs know. have been kind of taking a beating. Yeah. Are you a PMG guy? Or not? Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like um, them. Yeah, they've been pretty cheap. So I don't know if this means a comeback is starting or not, but I guess we'll I think to... the I think uh like you say Bedsy there. I think once his PMGs uh come out, I think people they'll they'll do a nice little jump up again. How, how do we feel about Bedsy? I kind of like Con and Bedsy more than Bedard. Bed- Bedsy's good. I like Bedsy, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Bedsy's good. From Twitter. Smirk will win. This one <laughs> blows my mind. And I don't know if you I saw I this. Know. I I don't know what this is. Yeah. Why does Lars Eller have two different future watch auto cards. Which one is the real one? And are yeah. there other players with multiple future? Watch? So here's what he's talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I if don't you're know. watching, here's one of them on a 999 2009 10 uh, future watch auto. Yeah. A- and then there's this one. Is that 0910 as well? It's the same 09010. What? That's kind of yeah. weird. I have no idea which is the real one. Here's my guess. That's the real one. That's the real one there. Okay. Because that's Carl Carlson's year. This is the imposter. Okay. Yeah. I know the 0910. That's the real 0910. This I've never seen before. Yeah, you can see alternate. I wonder if like a certain amount of them got damaged. Or lost or never got signed initially. Oh, that would that's be my only guess. So, so I'm throwing this out there. It's an unsolved mystery. Huh. Hobby mystery. That's weird. 
if somebody wants to <laughs> let yeah, us know bizarre. if you know the I honestly don't know the answer here, but it is kind of crazy. And well, here, hold on. One we'll second, more so information. I show you this. Doing play by play. Okay, Phil has left the set. He is going oh, through sorry. his cards. I thought I had it handy. Yeah. I have I have a bunch of future watches from that year, so I could have showed you, okay. but it's okay. We'll move on. Uh great question though. Very, very yeah, that's awesome. I never knew that. All right, next question. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. I this thought has crossed my mind. I'll let you take it though first, Phil. From Discord, dog is pilot again. Are goalie packs a real thing? I seem to always get multiple goalie cards together in single packs, but I've never heard anyone verify this. You ever had that feeling where you get like three goalies in a row? No, this has never happened to me. <laughs> I've never had that. No, ever. I don't really okay. pay attention to goalies. They're kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They're un sometimes. unstable. Especially goalie coaches. Super They're the weird. worst for women, especially yeah. the worst. Can't stand them. Can't stand them. <laughs> He's across this across the Atlantic. We don't care. I know, I know. <laughs> all right. Twitter, Sebastian Engelhart. We all know about the tops and OPG Gretzky rookie cards. Are there any other lesser known Gretzky cards? Sportscaster. Yeah. It's not Is really. That really? Mm. Well, I don't know. That's my only answer. Mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah, I don't, I don't have... think so. I, I, there's not like a star Jordan situation where all of a yeah, sudden people 84, think that 84 star card because and the difference there is that the 86 Fleer Jordan, obviously his, he was playing two years by then. And Gretzky's first year in the league was the 1979 OPG and tops. So, and yeah. I want to consider like any like WHA or, juniors cards i don't think they had i well isn't yeah. the picture from wha it is from i yeah. think yeah because i don't Gordy think they have wha cards yeah. I, I think from the same game so hey did you I see think... that set i just picked up you the did? gretzky bait yeah i'm really happy yeah. is that your first opg gretzky rookie uh that's, that is my first opg gretzky rookie that is correct yeah and you bought it raw yeah i bought the whole so to the people listening i uh, and watching i bought a whole 7980 opg set with a gretzky for uh for some monies <laughs> and uh yeah gretzky looked like it was in pretty good condition i have a tops one but i don't have an opg nice well congrats yeah. thank you sir kevin peters on facebook says top loaders are one touch cases for storing and displaying cards and is it a good idea to put them in a holder sleeves you got an answer here um i like to i think i did answer it, but i closed the thing I, I like to keep my cards, my prized possessions, my little babies uh, in my one touches. I know they take up more space, uh, but I'm an adult and I have a house. So I just make the space and keep my cards in it. And I find they look the best. I find top loaders get scratched and they're not as yeah. translucent as uh, the one touch. Um, I, I, don't I don't like, here's what I don't like about one touches. I don't like that the card isn't in the sleeve. I, I like that like, better. I, 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 you do? Yeah. You don't Why, think what, it's more protected in the sleeve? What are you eating? What are you opening the card, eating Oreos, and then closing the card? Kind of, maybe. I don't know. Well, that's do better. Like from scratches. <laughs> you don't. You don't think that one touches can scratch the surface a little bit better? I don't. You're gonna hate this, Josh. I don't really care if there's the odd scratch on some of my cards. They're okay. my cards. Yeah. All right. There you yeah. Go. I don't hate that. Well, I think some other people do. <laughs> it's okay. They're mine. All right, next question, Real McCards. Do you think that for 2023-24, the Cup, Upper Deck should release a 2015-16 McDavid Tribute Rookie Patch Auto out of 10, just in time for you-know-who's uh, Cup debut, similar to the 0506 Tribute cards that they already have? What's a card design you'd like to see added to a modern set as a tribute in what set? It could be similar to the all-time Future Watch Auto set, or it could be another Rookie Patch Auto, etc. So I, I think that's a good idea. Here's my thing, though, and I'm kind of going to zag on this whole deal. I'm getting, I feel like, really burned out on Tribute and Retro cards. I would mm -hmm. actually love to see, in general, more brand new, never seen before unique yeah. cards and less. Because my fear is, is that, you know, we're so reliant on, especially inserts like Jambalaya's and PMG's and all these kind of retro does cards that we're not, there's no, what's the new awesome amazing insert in the past few years that's come out that 
you know, maybe population count will get there maybe or something like that. But, but I, oh, I yeah. just want to see more of the focus on new stuff than tributes and retro. So I have a hard time kind of even getting my brain to think what it would be. But uh, do you have an answer to this? Oh, uh, Josh, that was a really good answer. Yeah, that was good. No, I agree with you. And I, I didn't originally. I, I, yeah. So I agree with you. You changed my mind a little bit. And then my simple man answer was, I love the exquisite rookie autograph design. That's yeah. my favorite, favorite, favorite from card. like the LeBron year. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. like saying his name too much, but the Gretzky, you know, one that it's going for like what thirty to forty k right now. Yeah, yeah. That's that is that that exquisite. It drives me crazy when Upper Deck modifies that every year, and then every like three or four years they just keep it back to the original one. I wish mm-hmm. they would insert that card in the Cup series and never change the layout. And then uh, B answer would be what Josh said. I'd like for them, less is more, right? Notice Mm -hmm. the designs we all love the most are very simple. Yeah. I find the more they complicate it, that's why I hate game used. There's no cadence to that set. There's no Mm -hmm. rhythm. It's a, it's a Mickey Mouse nonsense show. Um, So yeah, I'd like some new cards, some new, like we hear Billy always saying they get their design department. Well, fire them all and hire a new one and see what happens in a nicer way, of course, in a commerce way. <laughs> yeah. Let's get some. Yeah, new well, I, I think that they're, that they are going to focus more on new stuff and rely so. less on, on retros and, and tributes and, and stuff like that. You know, part of their problem is they have to work so far ahead that it's, yeah, that's so it's like, like when they react to what the hobby is looking to do, you don't feel it for two years down the road because they've already done all the sets right yeah. now through like 2025. And so lagging if indicator. anything, I wish they could shorten the lead time a little bit so that they could, you know, get stuff out there quicker to, and change with the market a little bit quicker. Okay. Next question. Kevin B. Smith. If you have the money to complete any set, what would it be? Like what set in year? So I said, I'm a, I'm in love with the 2012 Fleer Retro hockey set. Yeah, good I love choice. Every card Josh. in that set, and uh, you have an answer too, right? Mine is not hockey. Uh, mine is 1980, right. 1987 Topps Tiffany baseball. That's what the set. I oh, like. That's a pretty awesome set. That's a pretty awesome set. Yeah, I love the wood on the sides. Yeah, McGuire Bonds. The Bonds one is awesome. Yeah, it's set. amazing, man. Love Bonds. Big Bonds fan. Taylor A. Wood. Good question here. With the new outburst parallels, do you think Upper Deck should do like a classic Young Guns insert series where they add outbursts to older Young Guns like McDavid, have oh. a McDavid outburst red? So I, I do like the question. And here's the thing. It's very tempting for me to say yes on this, but there's one big, huge sticking point I have. I really don't like when a tribute card is done that says like rookie card on it when it's not the rookie year. So like, like if there's like a 2018 Crosby rookie tribute where the card on itself says rookie, I think that's incredibly misleading yeah. to most of the people that don't know every in and out of the hobby. So I think any card that has rookie on it should only be produced in the actual rookie year of that of that player. Which I'm a little bit of a hypocrite now because <laughs> like I love I love the all time future watch autos. <sighs> Right. And well, it's so, a great card, man. Yeah, I'm I mean, being totally it's... hypocritical, but yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, know. it's okay. I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I know what you mean. I do like this guy's question, though. It's a great I question. Think, yeah. Well, because um, on EPAC, they got some cool stuff on EPAC. Sometimes they just put out an Eric Carlson star rookie type of uh, format oh, from like yeah, 91. Yeah. That star rookie 91, 92 upper deck. It's so awesome. But it says star mm-hmm. rookie. It's not his rookie, right? Like, mm-hmm. nah. I don't know. It's a good question. Since we're on the subject of outburst, I was I had this thought, I think yesterday. The the Alper Silver is not obviously is not the most rare, but like the Bedard is that could be the that's such a nice looking card. That oh the, the banger. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Pops, eh? Did, really pops they did, out. They did a great job on that. Okay, next one. Instagram, Dogwood Collectibles New York. Thoughts on authenticating versus numerically grading high end cards. I, you're, I don't get what does this mean you're gonna have to explain this to me yeah so, so it's it's it, when people like get like a big like rpa and it just it's like psa authentic versus getting the number grade like like do you think oh that that yeah i you, don't uh, understand why people get the authentic grade i'm i don't even know what that 
Uh, I because I, well, I, I think people will do it because like got a big RPA so that if they want to sell it, like maybe if they're afraid the card is going to get like too low of a grade, but they okay. want buyers to know that it's authentic and the auto is authentic. It'll be oh. like, you'll see too, where it's like the, the card is graded authentic, but the auto's 10 stuff like that. Yeah. For me, I, I just like grade the card. And, and I think especially in hockey too, most hockey collectors understand that our thicker cards never grade well. No. So like we don't we don't bat an eye at a PSA seven cup card. Who grades like... a cup card? I don't understand yeah. that. Anyways, I'm not on that train. That I don't grade cup cards. That's I don't bother. What's the point? All right, Discord, Braun. Good question. Since series two release, card sale prices have been falling for Bedard's young guns and other cards. Yet box prices keep going up. Does this make any sense? Here in Canada, his young guns is now selling in the six hundreds. Is this maybe due to his 101 not being pulled and the bounty? I'm sure the bounty factor is in some of it, Braun, but I think box prices are more indirectly correlated to secondary market sales than directly. As long as people are keep buying them, the price is going to stay up. It's mm-hmm. when people stop buying it, then the price will will come down. Uh, the very big, meaty, emotional hobby topic here but uh what do you feel about just the whole series two box price thing well when i was ripping my three boxes of uh series two i completely forgot about the one-on-one and i was just like let's go high gloss let's go exclusive i to me i the one-on-one could be found tomorrow i think the box i don't think that's going to change much i think once you see a few high glosses on ebay um you know once once the the chase is is diminished i don't think it's just that card the kid's a stud man watch him play he's pretty amazing it's it's uh it's something nice to have in our in our hobby and sport here. Last question from Facebook, Jim Von Felt. I live in Illinois and I'm looking to get some 2023 24 series two tins. Where in my state can I buy these? The tins have been really kind of a lot of people chasing those right now. Yeah, I don't know. I would assume Jim, like Walmart or Target. I'm in Minnesota, so I'm not in Illinois. I you'll have to see like I'm sure they're stocking them. I don't know how fast they're flying off the shelves. You could try their website, like target.com or the target app, maybe order up there. Otherwise car chops will have them for sure. You could order on Damon Adams. You're going to pay a premium though. You're going to pay more than you would at Walmart or target. And you just might have to hunt for them. So uh, yeah, but I think they've been really popular and they do make a lot of retail. does make a lot of sense, Phil. If, if your goal, if you don't care about, not hitting like a high gloss or you don't want to pay the premium to hit that. I got blasters and having a long time got about two young guns and a blaster. So it was like $25 us for the, you got two darts. No, two young guns. Oh, okay. 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 But my point is if you looked at like what I paid per young gun, it was about $12 and 50 cents us for base young gun. It's $50 in a hobby box so if your goal if you just if you just say i just want a bedard base young guns and i want to pull it actually retail is not a bad way to go yeah there you go well thank you to everyone for submitting your questions always real good we do have personal pickups i'm excited about that i'm gonna let phil go yeah so i'm just gonna go down the line i'm gonna show them and let you talk about them okay okay all right here we go so here's your first pickup yes so that's my fifth Jake Sanderson uh, Future Watch Acetate, or fourth. I can't yeah. remember. Um, but I love them. Um, they're that I wish I took it out of the top loader. I think that's a sleeper card. Like if I was Jeff Wilson, I guess uh, I Ooh. am buying. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, no. Wait, you think Sanderson is a sleeper? Or are you, no, are you no. high on the Future Watch Acetates? Yes to the Sanderson sleeper. But don't you guys buy them because I'm buying them. Uh, and really big yes to the acetate um, future. Like, how are the young gun acetates like flying for big prices? But people, dude, I, I I'm picking these up. I've never paid more than two hundred bucks for one of these. Well, like, they don't they don't have the same like panache as the. And I why? think that well because, and I could be wrong, and somebody correct me if I am. But so young gun acetates used to be in SP authentic, and then they moved right. them to extended. extended. So I think they yeah. replaced that card with this one and it just maybe hasn't caught on oh yeah you're right that is what they did well so that's my point they haven't caught on yet who's they the rest of them so if i've caught on and you've so so is it like a third of the price of like his oh okay well i I paid like uh 
it's way cheaper, man. The, okay, so I lied. The most I think I paid like two fifty for that one we're looking at, and I have yeah. like three or four others. I I think I paid like a hundred bucks, hundred and twenty. They're forget what I'm paying. They're a beautiful card. It looks like crap on the screen here, but if you take it out, it's it's it, the Aztec cards are amazing. Very nice cards. So you should get a Caprice off Future Watch Acetate. Oh, he doesn't have one. It's too old. Yeah, I don't think he does. No, he doesn't. All right, here's your next one. Here's my next one. Well, I don't know which one it is. I don't even know what I sent you. Oh, yeah. I don't know my... Yeah, well, yeah. So I love... This is my only Bobby Orr auto. Um, and it's from 0304 or... It doesn't sound like you're in love with it. You're no, kind of well, giving it an It's because... It's because the, uh, the or at the end there looks like with the big pen. Yeah. I just don't have any other Bobby Orr auto. So I thought I'd get it. But it doesn't fit my collection, man. Where am I supposed to put that in my house now? Well, Where, this could Josh? be a tra this could be a trader at the expo. That's what it is now. Yeah. yeah. Should I go over it with the pen again? Is that defacing the card? Yeah, you should. Or do that. what if what if I put under Bobby plus Phil? <laughs> what if you draw <laughs> Coach Coe's mustache on it like yeah, Victor yeah, yeah, did? Yeah. And a little alien in the corner or something? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I right, think he got rid of the mustache, didn't he? Oh yeah, and my Fanimation, which these are going for a lot of money, and no one knows the print count, but that's my third one. Um. Is this yeah. the first Brady Kachuk Fanimation card? Or no, it's the third. Ones? Oh, wow. So the first year, the 1920, he has a really, really good one. And then last year's are really crappy. They have that like washed out look to them. Yeah. They're kind of like mongoloid looking. But yeah, that's my okay. third one. I got one sitting on EPAC. I just don't want to pay their fees, those thieves. Um, yeah, there you go. Those yeah. are my three cards. You have one yeah. more. I do? Oh, yeah, I forgot I got Larry Robinson. So I am a Habs fan at heart, and I love collecting seismic golds. And yeah. when I was a kid growing up in Ottawa, I grew up beside Larry Robinson's sister. So I met Larry Robinson oh. like 50 times. He's the nicest, nicest man you've ever met. And he's mm -hmm. huge. He's a large, large dude. Yeah. Is it Was this card more expensive than I would think or less expensive? Way cheap, think? way cheap. It was under yeah. like... 40 bucks 50 bucks so this was a hobby feels card then for you yeah yeah so I, I have a shoe box of like childhood like doesn't match my collection but it matches my collection this would go in there. yeah okay i had two pick up pickups it seems like i like parker's champions what'd you get what'd you a get a bit better than you i got a couple i got the mini oh, 1951 ov but parky, it's eh? not it's not just the where i'm really obsessed with these are the rapper backs <laughs> Troy's favorite part of the card, the back. Yeah, so I got the wrapper back, and then I picked up another one real quick. I got the Brett Hall, another parky that, that has the wrapper back as well. You don't, so you don't. I, I, I don't. I, I, I thought I'd like them, but where are you going to put them? Like they just go in a top loader, all loose like that. I'm kind of hoping. Well, they make like top loaders for like T206 cards and that, so I'm hoping that they might be too wide, but. I'm hoping that I can find like a mini top loader for I don't know. I've shaked your hand. Uh, I've shaken hands with you, Josh. I'd like to see you handle these cards. Really? Yeah. <laughs> too small for me, man. Too small for okay. me. Okay. I like them, but too small. I wish they'd make them full size. Yeah. Uh, Phil. Hmm. We're done. No, it's not over, is it? It's done. Yeah. What do uh, you think? I, been a... dude, it's like we were just talking like you and me. Well, no, yeah. I'm very tame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You have a good time. Oh, I had a great time, man. I wish it wasn't over. Yeah. Well, yeah. well you can come back. Don't worry. I'd love to. Uh, yeah, yeah. We do a, a big panel. Newsflash: We do a hundred and four of these a year. <laughs> yeah. I actually ordered something to look like Troy. It just didn't come in yet. So you got to get oh. me back. Yeah. <laughs> what headphones are those? They're my son's little sisters. There's. It's what I got. Okay. It's what I got. <laughs> can you bend down again? Are there are there daisies on the top of them? <laughs> it's a. Yes, there are. There are daisies on the top of your head. Okay. <laughs> I have these other headphones, but it had a mic. I couldn't get it working. These are my backups. And okay. here we well, are. You look great. You look great. <laughs> oh, many, many funny. thanks to you. Uh, forever be grateful. It's This is not a, you know, there's a little bit of work that yeah, was involved dude. in doing this show. And so I appreciate all the time and energy and enthusiasm that you put in. And if you like the episode, please leave a rating review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, you want to support us, you want to chat with us every day and fill too on the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider a $5 a month donation. Join our $199 support level tier on Patreon. Link is in the show description, whether you're on a uh, podcast app or YouTube. 
It's in our Instagram profile, TikTok profile. It's on our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com. There's a link there. Or Patreon's website, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. We are on social media. We're on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And Phil, the Hockey yep. Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dogbox Ventures, LLC. Thank you, Phil. Thank you all. We'll see you with Jeremy Lee on Thursday.